the Sydney Swans, probably at the moment in the vicinity of 30 to 35,000. But uh, I'm sure officials are delighted with the big turnout. Both of these teams have had success in the night competition in recent years. Essendon won it in 1981, the Swans won it in 1982, and the winner tonight receiving $120,000. Let's go down to the respective dressing rooms. And first of all, we say a very good evening to Jack Edwards. The cheer squad have decked out this room this evening. They've been in early, they've got all the uh, signs around Essendon go, they've got up on the wall, all the colours streaming about, and they certainly know that Essendon are in the grand final, and that's how it's being treated. Coach Kevin Sheedy has told his players he wants to take this out. There's a side going out on the ground now, and they're super fit, believe you me. They picked a very good team, I couldn't get the structure of the side. All I can tell you about the team is that Tony Elshaw and Mark Eustace will be interchanged uh, players this evening. But Kevin Sheedy does want to win this game desperately. He wants this to be the first grand final from 1984 and he's certainly got his players in that frame of mind. Well, that's all from the Essendon room. Let's see what Stephen Phillips has from out on the ground. Thank you very much Jack. Well bad news for Swans fans I'm afraid. State Our first grand final of the year. Gentlemen good evening. Lou Richards, Bob Skill. Good evening Peter and good evening to Bob and what a crowd there is here tonight. Over the 30,000 Bob and uh, of course I don't think I've seen uh, VFL Park look any better than this tonight. No, it's in magnificent condition Lou and uh, they have replaced a bit of turf around the centre but uh, the way the schoolboys game was played uh, the conditions there's not that normal heavy dew on the ground as Bob Hammond is uh, wiping the window to make sure he has a good view of the game but uh, I think that the ground and conditions absolutely perfect. Umpire Glenn James comes in to bounce the ball for the final of the 1984 Sterling Cup. The Swans are kicking to the right, Essendon kicking to the left. Merritt against Torbett. Knocked down by big Roger Merritt and picked up for the Swans by Siddons down towards half four but the umpire has found a free kick. It's going to the Swans and there's a little bit of a dish up in the centre. Umpire Glenn James coming in to sort things out. It'll be downfield. Well Terry Danaher collected young Siddons. He's still a bit stunned Peter. Well action thick and fast. Let's take a look at it Bob. Yes he did cop one too high. Short pass, the end result of all that down towards right uh, half forward, the left half forward for the Swans. Chance for Cruz. Gets caught by Carey. Might have been too high. The rebound to Baker. Out towards the halfback flank. Harvey behind his man. In goes Watson. The ball fisted over the boundary line. And it will be a Seven boundary straight throw. off the ground, Pete. Well, Bob Haven certainly not taking any chances there. And Stevie Wright coming on for his first game this year. Baker, a chance close to the boundary line, but the ball eluding him. And once again, we'll see a throw in. And Siddons going to the dressing room, it would appear. Kappa going up against Merritt. Kappa wins it, but he can't get it to a teammate. A big pack of players develops. And once again, we'll see a ball up. So a sensational start here to the grand final. Well, down goes Kappa. He got one too. Well, it's going to be on for Young and Old. I reckon. And Kappa to take the free kick at left half forward. And they've only been playing a minute and three quarters. Kappa about 65 to 70 metres out from goal. They couldn't possibly score from there. He's gone for a pass. Donnell in front and has taken the mark. Good mark to Donnell there at the fullback position for Essendon. Young sitting off the ground in the first minute or so. Cop one from Danaher. Ball punched out by Dennis Carroll over to Bradbury. Bradbury up there on the centre wing position. The Bombers go back into attack. Borker in front, just a bad grab. That is finally picked up by Williams. Shoots that right across the grounds. I don't know why. Marked by uh, Reese Jones. A hand pass to Holden. Another one coming up to Browning. The best kick of the Swan side. Goes for a long kick looking for Mitchell. Over the top of his uh, Mark Thompson to take a good mark at half back. This will be a pressure game. It'll be on for Young and Old, as Peter said before. Ball punched out by Torbat. Picked up by Ezra. Oh, he got one pretty high. Well, I think it's going to be on, Bob. Well, they can't complain. The Gibbets are going to take it. There we see now um, with, uh, Ezard with the ball. A long kick up towards Madden at the full forward position. The ball punched away that time. And there's a chance now for Smith to take it away from that back pocket position. Out wide. Out to right, but it's too uh, long for him. And the ball is out of bounds. About 50 metres around from the... Uh, Essendon goal. It's rather strange that the Bombers have got uh, two Rovers on the interchange bench in Eustace and Elshaw, Bob. Yes, well, they've got some uh, very good small players out on the ground. They've got a good coverage of tall players and small players. Ball kicked off the ground and a mark here to uh, Morwood. 
and he'd be down there towards half back. No scorers yet. Three, just on three and a half minutes gone of the first quarter. A mark, a good mark to Wayne Carroll. And he took a screamer the other week up there in Sydney. Gone for a pass out right to uh, right. Right's kick is a hurried one. It doesn't cover much distance. He's knocked over after he kicked the ball. And there'll be a free kick to the Swans down field against Merritt. Whoa. This is going to be a beauty as Evans fires at the goals. Doesn't make the distance. Players set themselves. And the ball is finally forced through for the first uh, score of the Sterling uh, Cup Grand Final for 1984. It's the Sydney Swans one point to Western yet to score. Well, certainly an action-packed start, isn't it? We couldn't have wished for more than that. Duckworth favouring the outer side of the ground. Oh, beautiful kick. Merritt went the punch. Too high. Collected Torbett on the shoulder and Torbett will take the free kick at left half forward for the Swans. So the umpire's getting on top of things now. Oh, Evans! Oh, got a mile in here, but Christie's opponent fair square in the back. Must be a free kick. And Van der Haag will take the free kick a little short of centre half back. Let's watch that again. Yes, there's one in the doubt. Not a doubt in the world about a free kick there. Van der Haag transferring play towards the member stand side. Knocked away by Carroll, picked up by Holden, where he fumbles badly. In goes Danaher. A real stack-up developing. Finally, it comes out to Clark. Clark's gone for the hand pass. Neagle at centre field tries to get around Reese Jones. Hawker loses out to Witzel. Soccer off the ground by Foy. Reese Jones, Foy. Foy on the boundary line. Kick is a short one around towards centre wing. Cruz fumbles, but the umpire has found a free kick. Once again, it's downfield. And there's a box on behind play again, Peter. Play continues. Mark taken by Kappa just inside the square. Kappa a long way from goal. Just about caught. Holden. Stevie Wright. Puts up the high ball, it's a real bomb, no mark played there. A wild hand pass from Mitchell, down towards Wood, oh his own man cannon into him. Back to Clark, Nesman looking solid in defence, Carey's kick is a high one, doesn't cover much distance, up towards centre wing, and a good safe mark has been taken by Watson. And Watson goes for short pass, it'll be OK, two bombers there as we see uh, Ezard take the mark, a short pass, a beautiful, and it's marked here by Danaher. And of course he got into a bit of trouble in the early part of this game in the first minute when he collected young Siddons who had to leave the ground down towards Matt but the ball will go back it'll go back again to uh, Danaher to have the kick the Swans one point to uh, Essendon yet to score and just on the six minute mark of this first quarter and a big crowd in attendance here tonight over the 35,000 mark I would say waiting on Danaher from about uh, 35 metres out there's the kick on its way but it's off target and through for one point so scores a dead level in the Sterling Cup uh, grand final of 1984 one point apiece well it's a there's Sitton sitting there looks like he's got one on the eye bub he doesn't look too good at the moment uh, he, he should be quite okay once he settles down I'd say there's Foy taking the mark and he started off pretty well down there at half back a hand pass over to Mitchell and the youngster gets clear the ball kicked back out there and Evans has got the mark. Oh, he's down by uh, Van der Haar, but he quickly gets away from that uh, move. He's out there at half forward, drives the ball down towards the forward pocket. The Duckworth getting on top of Capper. He's grabbed, he loses it now, picked up by Reese Jones. Hooks the ball back, looking for Carroll. In comes Wood, doesn't get the bounce. Warwood's down and the ball is out of bounds. Well, that was a fair bump. Ball out of bounds in the forward pocket. This is real pressure football. As we wait now for Kappa to go for this knockout with uh, Merritt. Merritt got it down but couldn't juggle the ball away and the umpire will ball this up about 20 metres out from the uh, Swans goal. Scores dead level, a point apiece. And it started off pretty, uh, pretty fiery this game. Merritt and Kappa again, knocked out by Merritt. Picked up by Thompson, who had a great season for the uh, Bombers this year. Tapped on nicely by Danaher. And the ball is out of bounds on the centre wing position. Seven and a half minutes gone of the first quarter. Scores dead level, a point apiece. And at the moment, bo uh, goals are hard to come by. As we wait now for uh, Merritt and uh, Torbett to go for the knockout. Torbett gets the front posse. Neither one got control, knocked out by Clark. Still picked up here now by Harvey. Can't get clear. Still a bit of a scramble going on there, but the umpire's found a free kick. It'll go to Reese Jones on the centre wing position. Reese Jones takes the free kick, fires it in towards the centre circle. Oh, Wood going through like a train. Beautifully done from Brian Wood. 
Jackson's a little bit of trouble picking up the ball. Gets Collett. Too high. He plays on. He's gone for a pass and it's a beauty too. Right down the throat of Danaher. And he's well within kicking distance. That's a foolish play by Reese Jones here. You should we say time and time again about kicking across, across goals. Not across goals in that case. Across the ground anyway. And it really set uh, Essendon up. Chance for the first goal of the match to the Essendon skipper. Looks pretty good from here. We'll wait on the goal umpire though. Only one behind. And so Essendon lead by that margin. Two points to one point. We've been playing nearly nine minutes in the first quarter. Ball to come back into play through the agency of Browning. He's gone for a pass. Looks for and finds Braddy who marks in front of Donnell. Reese Jones and Merritt. Merritt's too tall. Thought about the hand pass. And speaking of players having great years, Roger Merritt certainly would fill the bill there. Braddy goes to spoil. The umpire has found a free kick to the Swans though. It will be taken by Steve Torbett. Assisted by a 15 metre penalty from umpire Glenn James. Torbett now set a half back. He's got another 15 metre penalty now, which brings him up inside the centre square. I notice that Braddy's very heavily bandaged on that knee, Bob. Yes, it's a very big bandage, Lou, and uh, he does appear to be favouring a little as Vanderhoe almost took a screamer. Yes, two Essendon players nearly spoiled each other there, and the player put his head down, the umpire calls play on. Yes, uh, does just that, up towards the Essendon centre-half forward position again. It's fisted further forward, Whitzel fumbles. Could be crucial, he's backed up well by Braddy, though. Harvey right behind him, a hurried hand pass, luckily goes to Browning. Browning from centre-half back goes for a pass, tries to find Holden. He's done that on centre wing. Holden's got plenty of room. Puts it really high. Merritt at the back goes to spoil, knocks it away from Van der Haar. Thompson backs up well, though. Back to Clark at the point of the square. The Bombers moving forward now well. It's Donnell, right centre wing. Looks for a lead across the half-forward line. He's put it high. Madden can't take the mark. Rebounds to Dennis Carroll. Back in turn to Browning, and the Swans should be able to get out of trouble. We're just over the ten and a half minute mark. Oh, there's a free kick to hold up. The umpire said yes, it'll be okay. Now he's called play on Hawk in a bit of trouble. He's bowled over that time by Vanderhaar. It's a tough game out there. Oh, Smith into the back of his opponent, and it'll be a free kick. It'll be a free kick to Baker. Baker at centre field. The Bombers are two points to the Sydney Swans. One point. Ball down there towards the full forward position. Smith Scrap didn't have the ball, he'll get a free kick now, it's Sir Roberts I should say, will take the free kick down there in the back pocket. Roberts with the ball now. Goals are hard to come by in this early stage of the match. Mark out there to Reese Jones, he started off pretty well tonight too. Out there at half back, big crowd in attendance. Out there wide to the wing position, Madden flew high. A hand pass from Wood comes out now. Down goes Williams, he can't get clear, he tries to tap it on. Moore had got one on the back, but the umpire said play and finally picked up by Bernie Evans, taking a wide circle. There's a go now for the Swans to get the ball back there, and a good mark, a kick by Foy, and a mark taken here by Wayne Carroll, could be 15 metres. He quickly plays on, gets it out wide, and Holden's got the mark, and he'd be about 55 metres out. He goes for the long kick up there towards Capper, outmanoeuvred by Duckworth, picked up again by Little Thompson. Oh, Mark dropped there by Baker, but he's got plenty of time to get around Carroll down there on the back bucket. Goes for a short pass, it'll be okay, and marked here by Harvey. Grabbed by Mitchell, and they're not giving an inch. Oh, Browning nearly grabbed a screamer that time, but couldn't get clear. And there'll be a free kick to the... Uh, to Hazard. He was grabbed, and he didn't have the ball, and he'll take it, that free kick at centre field. So it's a free kick to Hazard as we just get over the 12-minute mark. No goals yet. Two points Essendon to uh, the Sydney Swans, one point. Here's Ard, straight down the ground with that kick. Trying to find Merritt, it's fisted away from him. Picked up by uh, Hawker. Very, very high kick, that one. Certainly not appreciated by the forwards down there. It rebounds to Witzel. Long kick, round towards centre wing. In front, Tony Morwood. Out point, Brian Wood, who trips over the mark and will be penalised 15 metres, but Morwood decides to play on anyway. He's gone for a pass out towards the right half forward flank. It's beautifully delivered, taken by Hawke. He's gone for the pass to Smith. He, too, has gone for a pass. It's OK. And a mark taken by Kappa. And you can see Kappa about uh, 35 metres out directly in front of goal. Has a chance to bring up the first major score of the match. Westland 
two points, the Swans one point to level. For both sides, certainly off target. Uh, Terry Danaher, two direct shots. Warwick Kappa, a direct shot. And, uh, I think that's indicative of the pressure that's on from both sides out there. Duckworth, again favours the outer side. Oh, a bit of interference out there. The umpire calls play on. It goes to Stevie Wright. He has a long shot at goal. That's pretty close, but not close enough, I'm afraid, for Swan supporters. And once again, free kick, it's a free kick. No, no, the other way. So no score, and the free kick will be going to Duckworth. He goes towards the outer side yet again. Looking for Danaher. He doesn't let him down. Certainly covers some territory from half four. Oh, Terry Danaher. A fairly good game too, uh, Bob. Yes, he's uh, leading Dennis Carroll and Mary Dance. Ooh. <laughs> A fresh air shot, it's a free kick to the Swans. The end result of all that to be taken by David Reese jones He's gone for a pass. Oh, it could be a little bit sticky. Neagles in the road. A hurried hand pass out towards Thompson right on the boundary line. A short pass again. Wayne Carroll is the flyer, and he doesn't uh, miss many of those. A good mark. Great mark to Wayne Carroll. 15 metre penalty, actually, it's about 30 metres. He's, he's given another played. one as well. He quickly plows in trouble. He's copped a bit high. I think he got a free kick. He could have been lucky. Tried to do that a little bit too much, but the umpire was a bit lenient. And he's got the free kick at half forward. Scores dead level, two points apiece. The other side uh, scoring a goal so far. The back Kappa goes down. They pile on top of him. And the umpire will ball it up about 15 metres out from the Swans' goal. Just on the 15 minute mark, two points each. Well, goals, as we said before, are hard to come by. A ball up, Madden against the Kappa. Well, Madden got that one down, picked up here now by Williams down there in the back pocket position. Drives it well up towards centre half uh, back. Now, nearly a mark to Smith, he goes after it again. There's a bit of fancy dancing. Back it comes again over to Foy, a running shot at goal. But Kappa couldn't grab that one and threw for one point. Kappa's kicked the high one into the goal mouth, but Vanderhaas there, he caught one right in the place, but he's OK and taking the mark there at full back. Well, they're dishing out plenty, both these sides now, as it goes back out there towards the half-back. Punched away by Torbert. Over it goes now to Little Mitchell, running to an open goal, fires. He's put it through for a goal. With the first post. They must have just grazed it. Well, they still can't score a goal. Four points to the Swans and uh, Esperton two points. And we're just on the 16 and a half minute mark of this first quarter. No goal scored as yet. Van der Haar does the kicking in this time and favours the member stand side or Madden. Missed it completely. Under the lights, though, the players tell us that it is difficult to see once it gets up pretty high. Holden's kick is also a high one in towards the right forward pocket for the Swans and Duckworth making no mistake about that mark. Takes it on the chest. He's gone for a short pass. And it's OK, mark taken by Neagle. Neagle a little short of centre-half back. Good kick in towards centre field. At the back is Reese jones Torbett nearly went between the legs. Short ball towards centre-half forward. Neagle's there again, but he leaves it for Thompson, who's caught, has to play on. Butters up once more, well played. Wobbly kick. Well, will we call it a good pass? It goes to Williams. The end result was what he wanted anyway. Up towards the right half forward flank. Down goes Witzel. Reese Jones is first to recover. He got one at the back. And that's what the umpire has called. A free kick to the swap. Walker doesn't want to go back on the mark, so he gets penalised 15 metres. We've seen a few of those dished out so far in the match. Reese Jones from centre half back. Crews at the back. Mark taken by Moore with nonetheless over the top of Brian Wood. And that could have also been 15 metres. Moore Wood out towards left half forward. He's looking for Bernie Evans and Evans takes the mark amid attention from Simon Madden a little bit late on the scene. He's making sure Bernie doesn't get away. I think Bernie was trying to creep away there, Pete. Yes, he certainly was. So Evans, just near the small scoreboard. Oh, he's kicked the ball atrociously. Kicking tonight has not at all been good. Picked up by Wright. A snapshot of goal is going pretty close. That's the first goal of the Premiership. Yes, and what a great boost for Stevie Wright. Uh, as, Mr. as Peter said before the game started, over a year of football, has played only uh, two halves and one full game in the uh, Channel 7 Reserve Cup. We watch on replay as Hawke brings the ball down. 
great snap by Stevie Wright and you couldn't ask for more to come back after 12 months and a snap one like that. Certainly not. The Swans lead 10 points to 2. Kevin Sheedy already down at the boundary line for his quarter time address. Knocked down by Torbett at the second go. The Swans get it out at the centre through Evans. No, they don't. He was well caught. Picked up by Timmy Watson. The Bombers go forward. Out towards half forward. And the mark is taken by Danaher about 65 metres from goal. And he's playing a great game. Danaher, the ball up there now. It'll be a mark to, uh, to uh, the big fellow Merritt. That was a beautiful pass by uh, Danaher. And he'd be the be best Bomber player at the moment. He's only about uh, 25 metres out from goal, Merritt. Directly in front. And of course a chance to put the Bombers' first goal on the board as we approach the 19 and a half minute mark of this first quarter. Merritt taking plenty of time for this one, knowing the importance of it. There it is on its way, and there's no doubt about that one, it's a goal! So just on quarter time, it's one goal, four, ten points to Sydney Swans, to Essendon one goal, two, eight points. Yes, and that's the uh, class of Roger Merritt at the moment. Uh, certainly chock full of confidence on replay. We see the lead coming from Merritt as the siren goes to end the first term. No time on, of course, in the uh, night matches, so it's two points the difference at quarter time. Just over 42,000 people saw Essendon storm home in the second half to take the 1981 Night Football Premiership with a four-goal win over Carlton. Inspired by Timmy Watson, the Bombers recovered from a 16-point deficit at half-time in a very low-scoring match to kick eight goals in the second half. Watson, Neil Danaher, Muir and Crow were outstanding as the Bombers won their first Premiership Cup since 1965. Tonight, they're shooting for those honours again in the grand final of the 1984 Sterling Cup on Seven Sports. Goal kickers to quarter time, Stevie Wright for the Swans, Roger Merritt for Essendon as we go down uh, to Stephen Phillips on the boundary line. Thank you Peter, well we had a look at Jamie Siddons, he had a bit of a spasm in his eye after copping that knock, it's closed up a little, but they've popped plenty of eyes. Result of the curtain raiser match here tonight, the yeah. with the two coaches and first of all Kevin Sheedy was asked why he thought the Bombers could come out on top tonight. Kevin, why will you win? Well, we've um, picked a pretty good side. We're, we're very confident, naturally, that um, we'll acquit ourselves well. I mean, to win the game, uh, to be overconfident, you know, really is a sin in football. But I think that uh, we play well, we're in good form, we picked a good side. So that gives us a good chance to have a crack at, at least winning the match. Now, yep. Swans yep. will be the same one. Kevin Sheedy speaking to Jack Edwards. Bob Skilton, some comments from you at quarter time. It's a very even quarter as, uh, with only two points the margin uh, of the uh, general play. I th thought the Swans had the, the better of play around the field but uh, just couldn't capitalise on the number of opportunities up forward. And that was some good defence, particularly by young Thompson, who's had a, a great season uh, for the Bombers as uh, Al Shaw looks to be onto the ground now. Second quarter of the 1984 Sterling Cup. Two points the difference. Madden North thumps it about 20 metres downfield, intercepting though for the Swans is Foy. A hurried hand pass comes back towards the centre circle and a chance for Donnell to pick the ball up. Tries to get through two Swans players, not successful, and is penalised for holding the ball. Out to Dennis Carroll. No, umpire Glenn James is redirecting the kick be taken by Smith, who scoots off. No one on the mark. A bad defence by Essendon. Smith's gone for the long kick down towards centre half forward, knocked away from Morwood by Copping. Mitchell cops one. Down it goes uh, to Kappa. A little bit too slow to get rid of the ball. The Essendon defence working overtime. And the umpire has decided on a bounce. Almost in the right forward pocket. Bounce down. Swans attacking zone. Madden. Palms it down. Picked up by Williams. Danaher and Dennis Carroll. In goes Baker. Finally gets the run of the ball. Tapped out wide. Holden should get there first for the Swans though at right centre wing. Looks for Torbett, can't find him, intercepting as Elshaw, having his first touch, he spent the first quarter on the bench, and a pretty handy player to have on the bench too. Back to Elshaw again. Neagle. Neagle from centre half back, wobbly punt kick in towards the centre square. Two number fives, Roberts at the back, can't take the mark. Torbett's gone for a hand pass, picked up by Holden. Holden's kick is a high one, down towards the centre half forward position again, Madden goes up, spoiled his own man. Socket off the ground by Smith, down to Kappa, tries to get it back to Smith, not successful, in goes Duckworth, 
a long hand pass, Williams caught, play on was the call from the umpire, Wayne Carroll likewise caught, still the call is play on, it's pretty scrambly out there, Bradbury's kick a short one, out towards left half forward and Ezard for Essendon, but the boundary line is too close, and we'll see a throw in at left half forward for the Bombers. One out of bounds, scores, one goal for ten points, the Sydney Swans to uh, Essendon, one, two, eight points, goals were very scarce in that first quarter, it was a tough uh, battle of defences. Ball knocked out by Torbett. Baker goes in now, can't get clear, still going after the ball. They're all having a bit of a dip, but the umpire will ball it up on the uh, Essendon half fourth on about 75 metres out from their goal. Well, this crowd has increased, Pete. I'd say it's around about the 40,000 mark. Excellent crowd, isn't it? Terrific crowd. Knocked out by Danaher, possibly the Bombers' best player in the first quarter. Free kick going out there now to Elsewood, just coming on the ground. He was the interchange player in the first quarter with Eustace. Up to Donnell and uh, Reese Jones at the back goes the big pumps. He didn't take the chance. It's finally picked up by Hawke. A long hand pass coming over here again. Back it goes now and we see the ball driven up there by Bernie Evans up towards the full forward position. But Wood's in the way to take a nice mark. The Eston defence played so well in the first quarter. Danaher with a sit here. He's got the mark. Played a great game so far. And he's a very inspiring leader as he goes for the long kick down there towards the full forward position. Over the head of the packet. Bounced the wrong way for Roberts. He's got a chance now. They pile in there and finally the ball is knocked on. I notice that uh, Eustace is on the ground. I think it could be a free kick going to Roberts for one in the back. Yes. Eustace on the ground too. As well as Elshaw. That drop can pick up who's gone off. Kick by Roberts is out towards the wing position. Punch to the ground that time. Finally a hand pass. Coming back to Timmy Watson. Puts it on the carpet once. Goes for a kick. It's a high one. Put his forwards under pressure. The pack fly. Donnell couldn't grab that one. Down goes Merritt. Hawk caught one in the face. As well. Eustace has a shot at goal. A chance for Roberts. It's punched on by Baker. Tapped through and played it safe that time. Granny. And it's through for one point. So the score is one goal, three, nine points. Essendon to the Sydney Swans, one, four, ten. Looks like Hawker was one of the players off the ground, Lou. Hawker off the ground. The ball back into play again. In front there is Torbett, couldn't hold the mark. Donnell grabs it, tries to get through the pack and finally hooks it back there towards Big Merritt and Braddy. They're both having a struggle. Braddy uh, couldn't hold that, neither could I. Picked up by Wright. He's legged. Now the umpire says play on as Hawk gets it out wide to uh, Witzel there in the back pocket. But he's too slow, but he recovers. He doesn't know what to do with it. Finally, it's cleared away by Dennis Carroll. Dennis Carroll out towards centre wing. Danaher just about best on the ground at the moment. Harvey, the other player off feet. Danaher has gone for a short pass. Thank you, Bob. Evans chips in, but he kept it away from his opponent. Well played. Backed up by Wright to centre. Morwood. Short pass. Down towards the half-forward line for the swat. Oh, Kappas missed the centre. He gets offloaded too for his trouble. Duckworth goes in pretty solidly, but doesn't he always? And we'll see a ball up at centre half-forward. Harvey coming back on. Baker off. Well, they all left it for each other. Finally, it's Clark. Clark's kick dropping short in towards the centre circle. That's uh, that man again. He's gone for a hurried hand pass. His teammate messed it up, so he picks it up again. Down a hurry's everywhere. Ezard doesn't get the run of the ball. It's a little bit slippery out there now. Almost runs into Donnell. Finally, he's covered by Browning. Williams eludes one, gets caught by the other. It might be too high. No, play on, says the umpire. Hawk. Now it goes to Cruz. Stevie Wright, left centre wing. A shocker. Mark taken by Madden. Neagle. Short pass to Thompson. Didn't cover much ground that one at all. In turn to Bradbury. He's in trouble. Eston messing around with this and they'll lose it. They have. Reese Jones in towards centre field and Holden. He's played well so far and gone for a short pass down to Smith at half forward. He too has lost it. He got one a little bit too high and will get a free kick. Might have been a bit lucky. I think the crowd think he might have been paid the mark, but he did cop one too high. Yes, it certainly wasn't a mark, was it? So Smith, a long way from goal. It'll be a mammoth kick to score from there. And that's 60 to 65 metres at least. See how he goes. He decides to go for a pass after all that. Not successful. Ezard should get there first. No, Madden does some soccer work. And the ball hustled over the boundary line. We'll see a throw in at right now. It's on the full. 
so it will be a free kick to whom? Essendon, I presume. And That's it will be taken by Carey. It was Nagel who forced it forward. Must have just hit a boot of one of the Swan players. That's right. Where was Nagel playing half back, Bob? On the wing, Lou, but uh, covers a fair amount of territory. Say. He seems to have been uh, in defence most of the time, doesn't he? Yeah. So it's a free kick going Essendon's way. And it will be taken by Bradbury. No, it's uh, Danaher. There's had plenty of kicks so far. Seven kicks to the Essendon skipper and playing a great game. Essendon go forward through Thompson. He looks for Donnell, got two hands to the ball, couldn't mark it. Rhys Jones goes through, looks for a hand pass, someone going through, none there. Finally, it's picked up by Browning. And Browning's out there on the centre wing position, goes for the long kick. That's the only way to score goals on this big ground. Oh, there's Kappa getting up before acceptances. Finally picked up by Wood in a bit of trouble, a hand pass. Coming back here now as the ball is shot across the ground now by Duckworth. Finally a hand pass out from Holden back to uh, Bernie Evans. Stretches his way through the pack. Has a running shot. Will it come around? Not enough. And it's through for one point. Done behind play a bit. Holden. Clark. Well, I'll tell you what, as we mentioned in the early part of the game, it's been on for young and old. And, uh, it's like a night football of old, Bob, well, I'll it? say it is in the old <laughs> South Melbourne days. One goal, three, nine points. Essendon to the Sydney Swans, one, five, eleven. Duckworth goes for the long kick out there towards that half-back flank. Cruz gave his mate a bit of a push in the back, but the umpire didn't worry about that. He'll get the mark. Plus a 15-metre penalty. He's off, not moving that quickly. Finally gets a hurried kick, not a good one. And there's Duckworth in the way to take the mark in the back pocket. Oh, oh capitally upended uh, Wood, but he get a 15-metre penalty against him. So there's plenty of incidents happening, happening so far. This brings him, uh, it's actually 30 metres, I would say. The kick there, there by Duckworth, back to the centre of the ground. Three or four Aston players went up. This allowed Burley Evans to get a hand pass out to Holden at centre field. He's actually going in the wrong way. Back it goes now to Browning. It goes for a pass. But it's a bad one and Wood chips in to take a good mark at centre half back. Just on the nine minute mark of the second quarter, the Sydney Swans, one goal, five, 11 points to Aston, one, three, nine points. Whitzel, on to Evans. Evans from centre field, a short pass down towards half forward and the big frame of Duckworth stands in the road again. Duckworth at centre half back. Chips the ball high, out to Neagle in front of Cruz. As I said before, playing most of his football tonight on the half back line. Palm further forward, it'll be a free kick to Essendon. Danaher, Ezard, Ezard at left half forward, marks in front of Holden, decides to play on. He too has gone for a pass, down towards Vic Merritt, he doesn't let him down, and the Bruce Jones hit him right in oh. Well, he's got a 15 metre penalty, I'd like to know why the book isn't out. Let's look at that again. So watch again on replay. Oh. <laughs> oh, you don't mind. Just like the old... Uh, I don't think it'll worry Roger. Right it's, no. it's put him uh, only 20 metres out from goal. And a foolish piece of play in my mind. Well, that is like the old night football at the Lake Oval. Capper off, Danaher on. Merritt for goal number two. And what's he done with that? I think he's made a mess of it, has he? Yes, he has. Yep. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Well, two bad mistakes there. First of all by Rhys Jones, as you mentioned, Bob, and Merritt, a sitting shot, certainly should have got a goal. Browning goes towards the outer side. A short pass has come unstuck. And how often we see that? Chance for an Essendon score. Ball snapped up towards Timmy Watson. He's on his own and takes the mark. He really made a mess of it. But Watson only about 15 metres out on a slight angle and Bob Hammond certainly has cause for alarm at the moment. As the old saying goes, you do not short pass from full back unless he is 100 metres clear. That's right. Watson shoots at goal and he too has made a mess of it. Goodness me, what are they doing? Well, I can't recall a uh, night match with such low scoring, Bob. Well, there's not many games when you get halfway through the second quarter where only... Well, each side has only kicked one goal. Ball back into play by Braddy. Out towards the Swans' half-back line. At the back is Van der Haar. Got into his opponent's back cruise. Picked up that time by Williams. Smothered. Hazard, I should say. Finally, it goes over to Smith. His kick is back towards the centre of the ground. And there'll be a free kick. It'll go to Mitchell. We see uh, Reese Jones trying to scoot off and get away with it from the umpire, but the umpire would never bar that. 
With, uh, little Mitchell's kick is up there towards half forward flying high was Wayne Carroll a great mark the Lee went over the line that time but he decides to go back for the kick at centre half forward goes for a pass not a good one and the mark taken down there by Thompson doing a great job in defence yes it is and the defence has been magnificent in this quarter out wide but it'll go back a 15 metre penalty against the Swans the score at the 12 minute mark it's one goal five 11 points apiece two goals for the match so far it's unbelievable there's Watson taking the market centre half back goes another short pass it'll be okay and half he's got it at centre field hand pass coming over there to uh, Elshaw beautiful turn away hand pass coming over now to Carey but his kick is not a great one but it'll be all right it's marked by Houston that's a damn good pass when it comes off <laughs> He's as happy as Larry now, Eustace. It's all counted, Lou, as uh, Elshaw dives forward. And if you're in the front position, if there's a missed kick, you've got the chance. That's right. Now, he'd only be about, uh, let's see, about 25 to 30 metres out from goal on a very slight angle, going for the Bombers' second goal. And we're just on the 13-minute mark of the second quarter. There it is on a try, and it's a goal. The second quarter by 13 and a half minutes, six points the difference in favour of the Bombers. Hand pass coming out from Wayne Carroll, he got one on the back, picked up that time by Mitchell, gets a hurried kick down there towards Wright and Thompson, knocked out now to Hawke, a hand pass to Cruz, tries to get through the pack, he slung to the ground. This allows Harvey to pick it up, go for a pass out wide, and there's Timmy Watson breaking clear, another hand pass coming over to Clark, and the Bombers are away, oh this is dangerous. As we see the ball finally picked up by Neagle, a hand pass to Donnell. Another one coming over, this could be a goal if they're good enough. And it's Elshaw having a pot shot at the goals. And it's coming around by Dizzle. Your goal, what a beauty. And I notice that Browning's going quick, saying he was touched by. Oh, he can go quick all he likes, Lou. Uh, I think he's trying to put it over the, uh, the umpire. Uh, it's more important to be up there and putting pressure on as we watch the replay. Steadying Nagel, a hand pass over the top to Dunnell. Dunnell does likewise to Elshaw. And now Elshaw steadies and swings it back. I don't know who touched there was it. No way known it was touched. <laughs> and all Browning could have been saying was it was it through for was it through for a point, but the goal umpire in good position. Two goals the difference, three five to one five, and those last two goals of Essendon coming up in two minutes as Izzard's kick comes down to half four. Danaher takes a safe mark in front of Dennis Carroll. Not a little surprise that Carroll's still on Danaher actually. Yes, he's just about best on the ground at the moment. He's gone for a short pass out towards Merritt. Couldn't take the grab on that occasion. The umpire, though, says play on. Scoop back to Wayne Carroll. A short kick towards the boundary line. It's OK, and the mark is taken out there in the pocket by Mitchell. Roberts. Smith. Back to Dennis Carroll. It's offloaded uh, by Harvey. Braddy's uh, in plenty of bother there. Madden. Neagle. Watson. Beautiful blind turn. Caught this time. Izzard runs into an open goal. Shoots. Is it another one to Essendon? I think so. Yes, it is. Lofts the punt kick down towards half forward. Carroll is the flyer. The hip out says the umpire at Essendon free kick. It'll go to his opponent, Terry Danaher. As I mentioned earlier, just about best on the ground. Madden, or the Merritt rather, can't take the mark. Plenty of Swan defenders are in there. It's picked up by Witzel. He's in a lot of bother, and umpire Rowan Soros has decided on a bounce. Just over the 16 and a half minute mark, and the Bombers are 29 points, the Sydney Swans 11 points, a ball up about 30 metres out from their goal. A scrimmage develops there, they're all having a bit of a go. Finally a snap at goal that time by Ezard, but Mark right on the line by Braddy. They're under plenty of pressure down there, now the defence. Out it goes now to Evans, Evans shoots the ball out towards Morewood, but he's pretty well covered that time. Finally, Danaher able to hold him, but down he goes. Oh, God, there's Wood going in pretty hard. He's collected him on the head, and Holden will take the mark out there at half back. Now, the Swans badly needing a goal before half time, and there's a good mark taken by Williams. They're starting to look a lot better now, Essendon. He's in trouble. He's grabbed by Evans, nearly held on the ball, and uh, the umpire will ball it up out there on the centre wing position. Actually, it's on the edge of the square. Well, Essendon. Four goals, 5.29 to the Sydney Swans. One goal, 5.11 points. Knocked out by Madden. Down goes little Mitchell. The umpire said it's in the back and Mitchell takes the free kick out there on the wing position. This fellow's a little terrier. Only had about four games 
And uh, Mark nearly taken by Bradford. He's got plenty of time to recover. Madden ran into him that time, but he's OK as he kicks the ball out wide looking for Wood. Roberts goes the punch. Back it goes to Carroll. Taps it down again. And finally it's picked up by Elshaw to set a half forward. Browning and uh, Watson. Neither can get uh, the mark there as it finally comes down to Roberts. Taps it over to Reese jones A hand pass coming back to Witzel there at half back. Short pass. It'll be OK and marked by Evans. He's off like a shot. Leaves Neagle for dead as he goes for the long kick. It'll be OK and marked by Danaher. He's out there at half forward, about 70 metres out from goal. And the Sydney Swans badly needing one at the moment. There's the kick on its way. Or oh, punched out again by Little Thompson. Goes Hawk, spins away nicely, but runs into trouble. Tries to get a hand pass back. The ball's pushed out wide. Coming into meet it now is Madden. A hand pass back to Harvey. And the ball kicked high out there towards that half-back flank position. Still no one taking the mark, and the umpire's calling play on his band. half streaks around that half-back uh, flank of the wing position. Goes for a long kick over the uh, Bombers' half-forward on Braddy. Goes the punch. The ball hits the deck. Foy falling on top of it. Williams, uh, Ezard's there with him. Finally picked up by Dennis Carroll over to Browning. A long kick up the centre half-forward. Danaher couldn't mark that one. And as a go now for the ball to be taken away by Hawke on a good mark by Donnell. Donnell at centre field. Looks for a lead across the half forward line. Out comes Wood, couldn't take the mark. It rebounds to Bernie Evans. Swans badly leading a goal, but they're breaking down across the half forward line at the moment. Watson drops the mark. Neagle over the head of Harvey and taken by Elshaw, who's gone for a pass down towards left half forward. That's OK. Shot at goal by Clark. Is off target one behind. It looked like a, a sitter coming up there, but uh, fortunately for the Swans, but once again they went across the ground. Wood doesn't uh, look as though he's moving absolutely freely at the moment, though, as the siren goes for half time. Not a good quarter for the Swans. It certainly was for Essendon, though, especially late in the term. As I said, Wood not moving too freely, and uh, looks as though. He is limping slightly, but at half time it's 4 6 30 to 1 5 11 in favour of Essendon. One of the toughest openings we've seen for a long time, and at uh, a quarter time, Bob, uh, both sides have only scored one goal each, and of course, towards the latter end of that quarter, mainly through their uh, getting the ball away from the centre, the uh, Bombers looked a lot stronger. Their defence has been magnificent with Terry Danaher starring at centre half forward. Yes, Essendon have been able to apply the continued pressure, and they've uh, offset the Swans. Uh, the Swans have been winning the ball just as often as Essendon, but their disposal of hitting, making the space for somebody to kick to, as have Essendon. Now Danaher playing well up the ground. He's got players like Timmy Watson dropping in behind him, and a merit a focal point at full forward, giving them something to kick to. Right, it's 19 points the difference at half time. 30 plays 11 in the final of the Sterling Cup for 1984. Essendon had a tough draw in the early matches of the 1984 Sterling Cup, but have arrived at tonight's final unscathed. The Bombers thrashed North by 63 points, then Collingwood by 51 points, before accounting for Hawthorne in the semi-final. The Bombers have a fine record in night football, and you're watching on Seven Sport as they try to add another premiership to their tally in the 1984 Sterling Cup Grand Final. Nineteen points the difference at half time. Swans being kept goalless, in fact almost scoreless in that second quarter, while Essendon added three goals for. Essendon's goal kickers to half time, singles to Elshaw, Ezard, Eustace and Merritt, and for the Swans, their only goal uh, has been kicked by Stevie Wright. Well, a good lead to Essendon at half time, nineteen points, but of course the Swans were down in their semi-final uh, by a similar margin and they got up to win it. Can they go on with it from here? We'll find out a little bit later on. But now it's time to introduce for the final time during the Sterling Cup for 84, Palmer's punchline, so we presume this is the knockout punch, and here's Scotty Palmer from the Sunday Press. The Sydney Swans have met only once before under the brilliant VFL Park lights. It was back in 1981 in the first semi-final, and the Bombers were to be victorious by 55 points. It was the culmination of a season for the Swans that saw wins over West Adelaide and Geelong, but for the Bombers, it was to be a stepping stone to the Premiership under Kevin Sheedy. Tonight, they meet for the second time with riches galore and the superb Sterling Cup riding on the outcome. And you're watching every kick on Seven Sport. 
the difference at half time. Bob Skilton, can you see the Swans uh, making inroads on the Essendon lead? Well, only if they can uh, come good up forward, Pete. Uh, they continually attacked early in the quarter, but they had no cohesion whatsoever up on the forward line. The Essendon defence with Thompson and Duckworth magnificent in the last line, Vanderhaar at centre half back, they just continually put the Swans back out on every occasion. Nagel started to get on top across the centre, and Terry Danaher was absolutely magnificent at centre half forward. As the quarter progressed, uh, we watched the highlights as Stevie Wright in that first term uh, snapped a goal and it was great to see Stevie Wright back after 12 months. But Essendon continued to bring the ball forward until eventually the Swan defence had to wilt. And we watch now as Nagel, whose game in improved as the quarter went on, Guts gets it out, Elshaw coming through and Elshaw now snaps truly and um, it was a great goal by Essendon. They kicked three in a, a short period of time and although Mark Browning doesn't feel it was a goal, uh, there's no doubt that it was uh, the goal umpire was in good position to see. Watson again gets it out to Ezard and Ezard was a great player around the packs. Uh, from In both quarters Ezard was busy as were Merritt, Watson and Williams. The Swans did not have a great deal of good players. Uh, Evans has kept trying right throughout. Wayne Carroll, Reese Jones has done well on the wing and Holden pretty good in the centre but uh, overall Essendon just too good so far. So far, OK. Well, two quarters to go. Plenty of time for the Swans to come back. As I mentioned, they were down by a similar margin in their semi-final. Can they do it again? Let's check the latest on the Seven National News now. News World follows the football, of course. Here's Carol. Right, we're watching now some of the goals of the year in the 1984 Sterling Cup competition. And first off, Peter Dacos. Wallace there on that half full and a beautiful pass at Matthews. He doesn't waste any time. He gets away from Jeff very quickly. Played a great... Uh, Second quarter, it's a long shot for goal, and how is that for a goal? Half back, that's Burns crashing through the back. He's clear, gets a hurried kick, he's put it through. Great play by Burns that time. It's a locker, he can't get that one. Muir backs him up, so does Faschini. Right foot snap, oh. a goal! What a turn by Silvio. Down towards full forward, Col Coleman goes to spoil. Snapshot for the goal for uh, the Roys by Davis, and he's put it through. Oh, Great goal. Nice goal. Again, he's got another chance. Now it's Felky this time. Felky going goalwards from the boundary line. Shoots and a goal. Eustace in trouble. Hard to get out. Comes out beautifully with the ball. Eustace shrugs the tackle, turns and shoots at goal. That'll be the goal of the night if he's put it through. What a shot. Kick. Browning should trap it. No. Out comes Lockett. Twisting and turning. A long shot at goal. Will it be there? It's a great one, I think. Yes. What a shot. Again touched, it won't even be a score though, a chance for Flintoff on the boundary line, a snapshot, is close, that's not a bad goal if it's there, it's through. Position McConville in front, can't complete the mark, a chance for Meldrum, ducking and weaving, beautifully played, Meldrum can shoot at goal, he has a shot at goal and he's put it through, that was a great goal. Forward, centre half forward, and a good mark taken by the uh, Carlton skipper, a long shot at oh. goal, here's one coming up for sure, it's yes. a goal. A beautiful goal by Johnson. Some of the goals of the year in the Sterling Cup, some fine play, and of course the player that's judged uh, to have played the most outstanding game in the series during the Sterling Cup for 84 will receive a magnificent prize. Let's check on up now. Westman coming back onto the field. The Swans are already out there. Let's check the stats to half time. It's a lesson in leading in the kick uh, area. Marks well clear in the marking. Three kicks, the Swans getting the most on that occasion, but uh, that early opening with a few head high tackles uh, being the main reason there. Handballs very even, 38 to 39. Hit outs 10 to 5 in favour of Essendon. Shots at goal 10 to 6. And that uh, the difference, four scoring shots, uh, four, not uh, four scoring shots, but four shots at goal really coming in the latter half of that second term. Westpac announced 18 points the difference at half time. Well, how did Bob Hammond sum up the situation before the match? Bob Hammond, coach of the Sydney Swans. Well, Bob, why will you beat Essendon this evening? Well, that all remains to be seen. I mean, what we're about is playing a, a game that can beat Essendon. I mean, it's not a matter of why, it's a matter of how. And uh, we're going to try to put a game together that uh, has worked for us in the last three encounters. And uh, providing we can extend that game and have the discipline and the, and the character that we've played in those three games, well, then we stand a very good chance. We begin the second half of the Sterling Cup Grand Final. Essendon leading by 19 points. Umpire Glenn James comes in to bounce the ball. Torbett in the ruck for the Swans. It's Madden for Essendon that wins out. Knocked further forward by Harvey. 
a chance for Browning to pick it up, but it rebounds back to Harvey. Umpire Glenn James, though, in the meantime, had blown the whistle for another bounce, and there must be about 25 players around the ball. Madden jostling with Torbett. It's won by Madden, picked up by Evans. He can't do much with it. It's pretty slippery out there. Holden back towards the centre circle, waiting behind is Duckworth. Loses it out to Danaher and went to palm it off the carpet. Picked up by Mitchell. His kick of a short one out towards the point of the square and the mark is taken by Siddons. His first mark for the night. He was uh, just about KO'd in the first uh, 10 seconds of the game though and a good safe mark taken down there in the back pocket by uh, Vanderhaar. Looks as though Wood's off the ground, Pete, and Dunnell has gone to the back pocket. Yes, we had his Wood limping just before half-time, didn't we, Bob? So uh, let's hope the injury's not too serious. He seemed to be OK, obviously not taking any chances. Out comes Braddy. In goes Baker. Oh, easy stuff for Baker. A shot at goal. Looks pretty good, and he's popped it through. Well, up there, but great Braddy. We saw that Watson was leading in the race for the ball as Bob Hammond uh, does not look too pleased. They would not have wanted Essendon to get the first goal. But Braddy came out and uh, did all that he could possibly do. But a great goal by Leon Baker. His disposal is usually, as it was there, impeccable. And um, you cannot give Baker many opportunities. Well, Baker had plenty of time to steady and that was his first goal. So Essendon's five goals now, kicked by five different players. 25 points the difference, the Sterling Cup Grand Final from VFL Park, we're just on the two minute mark of the quarter. Well, I went between Reese Jones's hands that time, this allowed Eustace to kick it off the ground, right down to the forward pocket, Roberts and uh, Ezard having a great battle, tapped on by Ezard, there's a go now, Merritt gets a hand pass over to Danaher, a shot at goal, but it's up target and out of bounds on the full. So it's a penalty free kick down there to the Swans. It'll be... Uh, Boy to take this free kick. Reese Jones in front, punched away by Harve, hits the deck again, out goes Elshaw, grab, gets a hand pass back. Still plenty of fumbling, nearly one on the back to the Swans player there in front. Down goes Roberts and the umpire will board it up again on the half forward line for Essendon. We said at half time about the dominance of Danaher. Well, Dennis Carroll has gone to centre half forward, Cruz onto Danaher at centre half back. Well, Cruz a little bit slow, but he may play a bit closer. Out it comes to Madden, couldn't get clear. They pile in again, everyone having a bit of a boat. Punched on again and the ball is out of bounds. But this time it's up towards the centre wing position. 36 points Essendon to uh, Sydney Swans 11. 25 points the difference at the three minute mark of this third quarter. The grand final of uh, the Sterling Cup for 1984. Knocked out by Madden. Oh, there'll be a free kick, it'll uh, go to the Swans, will it? Yes, it'll go to Bernie Evans out there at half back. So this is Evans. Kick out there towards Danaher and Vanderhaar. Neither one could give us a chance now for Mitchell. Can't pick it up. Down he goes. Picked up by Little Thompson. He's played a great game, but he fumbled that one. You couldn't blame him for that as they stack up again. And the umpire will ball it up this time on the Swans half forward line. About uh, 70 metres out from the goals. And goals are hard to come by for the Swans. They couldn't score one in the uh, second quarter. And of course only managed one in the first. Knocked out by Madden, back to Elshaw, he fumbled it. Finally it's cleared away by Clark. There we see a chance down as the ball, a hand pass. Coming over now and the Bombers get the ball away through Neagle down towards the full forward position. There's the big fella, got it, Merritt. And Merritt's about 45 metres out from goal. He decides to go for a hand pass to Neagle. Could have put him under pressure. Short pass, it'll be OK. And it's marked here by Harvey, directly in front. About 25 metres out from goal, and the Bombers are starting to look good. And they're looking odds on favourites to win this championship for 1984 at the moment. I think you'll agree with that, Bob, as we see Bob Hammond on the phone. I don't know who he's ringing. Yes, he must be wondering just what he can do at this stage, because uh, they, there's nothing up forward whatsoever, whereas Essendon always looked dangerous. There's the kick by Harvey. Not a good one. And it's through for one point, so it's uh, one goal, five, 11 points, the Sydney Swans to Eston's five goals, 7.37. With GMV6 now joining us, Pete, uh, viewers up there will be disappointed to know that Assumption College received a great thrashing in the Hurl Shield. I'm sure they will, Bob, as Craig Braddy brings the ball back into play, favouring the members' stand side. Well, he has to go back again, he'll be, I think, given uh, 15 metres extra. And in fact, that is the case. Ready this time. Looks further upfield. Not a long kick. 
looking for Torbett, he's in front of Madden. Neither of those guys have had a great influence on the match so far. Neagle in more trouble than the early explorers, but he's hit too high, I think, yes. And Merv Neagle will get the free kick at left half forward. And a lot of useful work in the first quarter, mainly in defence. Merrick was the flyer, can't bring the ball down, it goes to Browning. Just kick along the ground, out towards the outer side. Thompson and Mitchell. Thompson gets there first, it's very close to the boundary line and in fact has gone over and so we'll see a boundary throw in on the centre wing position. 26 points the difference in favour of Essendon. Can they make it the double this year? A premiership here and maybe a premiership later on. Empire Rowan Soros has decided on a bounce. Very good crowd of attendance tonight despite the cool conditions. Probably the biggest crowd, I think, uh, for four years in a night match. North Melbourne and Collingwood was pretty big back in 1980. Wayne Carroll gets grabbed, looking for a free kick. He comes out almost with the ball. It's still a real scramble out there on centre wing. Socket off the ground by Hawke. A chance for Stevie Wright to pick it up, but it's very slippery. It goes to Elshaw. He, too, having trouble trying to gain control. Knocked further forward by Dennis Carroll. Duckworth gets there first in front of Morwood. Strong in defence. Duckworth out toward Van der Haar. It bounces OK for him, but Van is content to let the ball go over the boundary line, and we'll see a throw in again. Approaching the seven minutes mark of this third quarter, 5 7 37 Essendon to uh, the Sydney Swans. Uh, one goal, 5 11 points. Knocked out by Matt, picked up by Clark. He drives the ball back to half four. There's a good mark taken here by Torben. Not a great kick, ball short. Donnell couldn't hold that mark at the back there as Madden tapped it over beautifully to uh, Donnell. He quickly takes the ball away from the half-back line, looking there for Danaher. Torbett goes the knock, gets it out to Reese jones Goes for a pass, it'll be OK. Oh, he picked it up on the half-volley that time, Holden. But they're going away from the goals as Smith picks it up, a hand pass coming to Roberts. They're still messing about the Sydney Swans. Out wide now is a chance for Sydney and has the chance of to go deep into attack as he drives the ball down there towards Morwood. Yeah, it'll be a kick down no, there. a trip back to uh, Timmy Watson. Oh, well, it's against, uh, against uh, the Sydney Swan. I think Timmy Watson was coming in to chase Sydney's and Dennis Carroll tripped. Well, tripped OK, him. that was a chance wasted by, the, uh, by Carroll. So Watson to take this free kick at uh, half-back. 37 Essendon to uh, the Sydney Swan's 11. And the Swan's badly needing a goal. Danaher and Cruz. Eustace got one a bit high. Down goes Cruz. Bradley gets out of the pack, but the umpire said it'll be a free kick to Cruz. I thought so on the uh, back of the neck. So Cruz to take that free kick at half back. He gives a hand pass to Brown. I don't want to go away from the goals. He's kicked it 20 yards behind where he picked it up. There's a go now for Little Lazard. That's what you get for doing those sort of things. Goes for a pass. It was too long for Merritt. And it'll go out of bounds in the forward pocket. Deep in the attacking zone. Uh, for Eston, about 30 metres around from their goal. On a percentage basis, Lewis just doesn't come off when you continually go across the ground. And when you go back like that, he could have had a kick and he could have been further up the ground that time, Cruz. Knocked out by the big fella, Merritt. Eustace there, finally cleared away here by Torbett, and it's out of bounds on the fall, and a penalty free kick will go to Harvey, about 45 metres out from goal. What on the boundary line for Eston? Harvey at right half forward flank. Be a pretty good kick to score from there next to that bunker. In front is Merritt, knocked away by Braddy, picked up by Mitchell, tackled well by Eustace, and the ball over the line again. And the throw this time right next to the behind post. And the Bombers doing all the attacking, Pete. Yes, they've got one goal on the board already. The Swans haven't scored one since uh, the first quarter, picked up by Evans. Danaher chips in. And it will be a ball up. Listen, they appear to be able to handle the tight situation far better. They come yeah. out with the ball and they're able to steady and do something. Knocked down to Clark. Williams goes in, not making any headway. Well, the Bombers are not hesitant, Bob. They, they know what they're doing. They're going in first. And, of course, the uh, Swans are standing back waiting for them to make a mistake. Another bounce. Still at right half forward flank for Essendon. About 20 players around the ball. Danaher and Torbett. Neither gets an effective tap out. Looks like rugby this. Once again a ball up. Not much headway at all being made at the moment. Knocked down by Torbett. He knocks it down to Mitchell. He can't get a kick at the ball. Finally it's Browning to get it out of that mess. 
Back to Bradbury on centre wing. He'll get there first. Or will the boundary line be just a little bit too close? Has he kept it in play? No, it will be a boundary throw-in on centre wing on the outer side of the ground. 5-7 to 1-5. A difference of 26 points in favour of the Bombers. After they trailed by two at quarter time. But the Swans haven't scored a goal since then. Browning. I must add, they don't look like scoring one. Browning kick is a short one marked by Williams. He tries to get a hand pass in. That won't be uh, 10 metres, so the umpire calls play on, but there are Essendon players everywhere. Carey's kick is a short one down towards half forward. Danner had got two hands to it. It rebounds to Eustace. He's tackled well by Foy. Very well, in fact. And the umpire has played hold in the ball. Just on the 11 minute mark of this third quarter, 5 7 37. Essendon, the Sydney Swans, 1 5 11 points. The ball there to Dennis Carroll. Oh, he got under that one and really a mark to Neagle. I think he might have got one on the back or holding the man. And Neagle to take that free kick around about the centre half forward area for the Bombers. The Bombers looking really good as it goes up there. The back flying high was Danaher. There's a go from Bradbury. Taps the ball on. And finally we see them piling in as it's pushed out now towards Roberts. Doesn't attempt to pick that up wisely. There's a go for Elshaw except his big boot got in the way. Now he still can't pick it up. Down goes Cruz, the ball finally knocked on again by Roberts. Picked up that time by Williams, but smothered by Carroll, the ball is out of bounds. Out of bounds about uh, 40 metres around from the Essendon goal. They're 5-7 to the Sydney Swans, and the Swans haven't scored a goal since quarter time. Kick by oh, Hazard, missed that one completely. They're all have, uh, having pot shots there as the umpire will ball it up about 35 metres out uh, from the Essendon goal. They're looking a lot better, Bob. Well, if the Swans do gain possession at the moment, Lou, there's virtually nobody up forward whatsoever to kick the ball to. In fact, there's only two players on the uh, Swans' half of the ground at the moment. Carroll went pretty hard, collected Williams, but he uh, regained his balance. In they go again, and once again, we'll see a ball up. Still about 35 metres out from goal from the Bombers, or for the Bombers, towards their forward pocket position. Torbert against uh, Merritt. Little Mitchell's there, comes out to Donnell. Kicked off the ground again uh, by uh, Neagle, goes for a long hand pass. Plenty of bombers there as Madden gets one off the side of his boot. And it'll be okay, and the mark taken down there by Foy. Foy with the ball for the uh, Swans in the back pocket position, but they can't get the ball over the centre wing position. That's how strong the bomber defence is, and the ball knocked out that time by Watson. And it'll be a throw on about 70 metres around from the Eston goal. They're 5 7 37 for the Sydney Swans, 1 5 11 points. We approach the 13 minute mark of this third quarter. Only one goal scored so far in the third term, and that was by Essendon. A chance for Siddons. Kick is a short one towards uh, Danaher. Back to Bernie Evans. Here's a promising move by the Swans. Evans has kick up towards centre half forward, and Moore, leading out goal, takes the mark in front of Duckworth. Now he's about 35 metres out. On a slight angle. That was well played, Bobby. Let him back, then drop forward again. Yes, and good play by Evans and Danaher. They team yeah. well to get the ball down. A nice pass. Morwood, 35 metres out. Can he bring up the Swans' first goal this half? It looks close. One behind. Well, they badly need a couple of goals to give them a chance in this match. And some of those shots that have been missed uh, by Terry Danaher, by Morwood and uh, others. Merit. I wonder whether there is a bit of breeze out there. Madden at the back, can't take the mark. I don't think Simon likes playing in the night matches. Down goes Mitchell. The, the tackle was too high, says uh, umpire Glenn James. And young Mitchell has the free kick almost in the left forward pocket. Looks for Morwood. Knocked away by Carey. Into the open spaces for Neagle to pick up. Neagle goes along the ground with the educated kick towards the boundary line, and that's just what he's found and it will be a boundary throw in in the right forward pocket for the Sydney Swans. It's a well placed kick by Neagle. In fact, since quarter time he's played a superb game. Again, uh, mainly in defence. Where he's actually playing, but most oh. of his all. <laughs> nice old throw, that one. Finally it comes to Ezard from Hawker. Ezard's kick up towards the centre circle, marked by Williams, looking for a hand pass, someone running through. He finds Ezard, who'd moved up well from the back line. He gets offloaded, the hand pass intercepted by Wayne Carroll. It goes to Roberts in the end. Roberts a high ball. Up towards David Bruce Jones on left centre wing. Tries to find Holden. Not a good hand pass. Now he's found Roberts in turn. Roberts back towards centre field. Picked up by Wright. Wright looks to get clear of his estimate of plate at Vanderhaar. Ships it back oh. towards uh, the big fella Torbert. It was too long for him. Back to Mitchell in turn. Back it goes to Wright. They're messing around with this, aren't they? Danaher gets it onto the left foot. 
and a very high kick down towards Siddons who got a mile in the air but never looked like taking the mark and it rebounds to Thompson and good play once again but the kick is not so on nearly a mark to uh, Rhys Jones he's not playing and he's called play on the Bombers didn't wait for that he gets his kick up there towards forward uh, the full fourth position a great mark there by Vander well their forward line is non-existent at the moment ball back there towards the two number sevens Carroll and Donnell it's knocked out again Torbett going for a hand pass over to Dennis Carroll about 55 metres out from goal the kick goes short oh there's another one drop oh an easy one drop that time by Mitchell he has a quick hurried shot at goal but it's off target and it's out of bounds on the full or will it be a throw in I think it'll be a throw in it was bad luck for you Mitchell but, uh, you must take those chest marks on the list Friday dropped the sitter ball back into play again Danaher and uh, Merritt knocked out by Danaher there's a snap at goal by Bernie Evans, now it's out of bounds on the full. They can't score a goal. They haven't scored one since quarter time. One goal, six, 12 points. The Sydney Swans to Eston, 5 7 37. Ball back into play again by Clark. Out towards the half back line, punched away by Carroll, grabbed by Browning down there on the full. He actually threw that one out, but the umpire said, OK. A mark dropped that time by Clark, but he's got plenty of time to recover. There's no opposition down there. Out it goes to Thompson. He's shaping up as a pretty good player too. Vanderher over to uh, Harvey. Harvey in the half back. They've got a ton of time to go for a pass here. And the mark grabbed here by Hawker. Hawker just inside the square. Looks for Watson who got one in the back. And that's what umpire Rowan saw as pays. But he's paid the advantage rule. Picked up by Donnell who steadies at half forward. The long shot in towards the square. And the ball touched. Is it? Two goals to Izzard, he booted that one through only a metre from the line and Essendon now lead 43 to 12, so that's a difference of 31 points in favour of the Bombers. They certainly look set for the Sterling Cup 1984. Play on is the call, no one can get clear. Finally it comes out to Dennis Carroll, a high kick out towards the point of the square underneath it, Bradbury and Stevie Wright, the latter going for the knock-on, but it's intercepted by Clark. Knocked down to Reese Jones. He's in plenty of trouble. Back to Danaher. Can't find a teammate. Down goes Harvey. A fair hip and shoulder, though. The real stack up develops, and it's a baller. Just over the 18-minute mark, and Eston looking good. 6-7-43 to the Sydney Swans. One goal, 6-12 points. They still can't score a goal. Since quarter time. Oh, well, no one got the knockout advantage there. As Danaher goes down, still plenty of scrambling going. Clark gets a wild kick out. Oh, fumble that time by uh, Smith. The ball back again. They're falling over like nine pence. A hand pass from Elshaw out there to Bradbury. Over it goes now to Little Lazard, who's played a great game. A long kick up towards the full forward position. Foy couldn't hold it. Browning nearly messed up his own mate, uh, Cruz. And they finally lose it, and the ball is out of bounds. I don't know what's wrong with them. They're making a lot of fundamental mistakes, Bob. Yes, but that one was good play by Baker. Um, Browning was uh, just about set it kicked the ball and Baker just knocked the ball out of his hands and uh, Essendon's defensive work has been superb. Out of bounds about 30 metres around from the bomber goal. Up the back is Danaher, got the tap down. They all pile on top of him. Finally a snap at goal. My, uh, my Hawker it was and uh, it's through for one point. So they move on to six goals, 8.44 to the Sydney Swans. Well, they're stagnating on that score there, Bob. 1-6, 12 it? points. They're taking unnecessary risks now with a, that short pass out from goal. As we said earlier, unless the player is completely clear, you shouldn't short pass like that. Ball out of bounds about 45 metres around from the Eston goal. That's Wayne Carroll going for the big knock. Grabbed here by Neagle. A long shot. It won't reach the distance, I don't think. But it's finally four through for one point. So the Bombers move on to 6-9-45. To the Sydney Swans, still one goal, 6-12 points. Just on the 20-minute mark of this the third quarter of the 1984 Sterling Cup Grand Final. Mark taken by Smith. Smith at left half-back flank. Brings it inboard towards the centre circle at the back. Mark taken by Danaher. Bradbury in hot pursuit, but he's gone for the hand pass effectively to Roberts. His kick is short to the point of the square, and that'll be a mark to uh, Hawk. Kerry making sure that he didn't play on. Short pass, mark taken by Morwood. He's a long way from goal, tries to get around Duckworth, oh. finally does so, he's pinned by Carey, a good tackle. The Essendon defence, as we've mentioned, strong right throughout the night, in goes Harvey. Duckworth tries to soccer it off the ground, gets a clear of two opponents out towards the wing position, and it's out of bounds. 
Well, it's amazing, you know, Bob, they're finding it very hard to get it on their forward line. When they do get it down, they do something silly like that, like Moore, Moore would do that. Yes, I think when you're under pressure like this, you do make mistakes, and Stevie right there copping one. But, uh, you do silly things when you're a little bit rattled under pressure. Harvey's kick in towards centre wing. The mark, well, not mark, but the ball going to Smith. Now, it's a free kick downfield, is it? Yes, it is, and it'll be taken by Ezard, who's the leading goal kicker in the match. He has two. And Poe Rowan saw is indicating where the mark is. Ezard takes the kick at right centre wing. He's gone for a pass, knocked away by Torbett. Back to centre wing. And that was uh, Hawke. Finally, it's Danaher's mark. Neagle won't let him go, though. Oh. Well, gee, they're in trouble now. Wayne Carroll, Shepherd for Browning, but there will be a kick going to uh, Danaher and a 15-metre penalty. Danaher now goes straight down the ground. In the road, Bradbury. Got two hands to the ball. Knock on by Tony Morwood. Evans is hipped uh, out of the road. In goes Siddons. A hurried hand pass. Back to Clark. Clark tick is high out towards the square. Ooh, in goes Elshaw and out goes Elshaw. And the ball is picked up by Dennis Carroll. Oh, Mark missed by Stevie Wright. He's got a chance to make amends. Look for the hand pass. That's okay. A long shot at goal by Carroll. And the mark taken by Clark. Well, they can't get a goal down there. They're messing about too much. And a good mark by Clark. A quick hand pass comes over to uh, Merritt in the back pocket. Pass. And the ball marked here by Harvey at half back. 22 and a half minutes just on. 6-9-45. Esther, the Sydney Swans won 6-12 points. And there's a chance now for the ball to be driven further forward by Hawker. Looking for Van der Haar. They both get under that cruise and himself. Down goes Foy. Nearly a trip. They pile in again. Finally picked up by Foy again. He's really battle hard. A funny old kick by Tor, but the umpire says play on as Wayne Carroll goes for the kick over the uh, centre half forward position. Oh, there's a big punch that time by Duckworth. Picked up beautifully by Neagle. He hasn't played a bad sort of a game either. Van der Haar having a battle that time with Torbert. And we've seen Cruz grab by the leg, but the umpire's paying a free kick to Torbert. Van der Haar at centre half forward, Lou. Danaher at centre half back. Short kick. Out to Holden on his own. He started off very well, but he uh, hasn't played so well since the first quarter. He's had plenty of mates. Oh, down goes Moore and Duckworth, but backing up well as Merritt. Goes for a short pass. It's a bit long, but it'll be a throw-in from that half-forward line for the Swans. About 55 metres around from their goal. 23 and a half minutes just on. 6-9-45 Essendon looking good to the Sydney Swans. One goal, 6-12 points. Nobody can get clear from the boundary throw-in. And it's a real stack up, a ball up will be the end result. Just checking in the time that the Swans got that goal in the first quarter. It was Stevie Wright, it came up at the 18 minute mark. So just on quarter time, their last goal, and they haven't looked like scoring one since. Knocked down by Merritt, it goes to Williams. Carey picks it up just inside the boundary line. A knock on by Harvey, taken by Elshaw, just inside the line again. Elshaw's gone for a pass in towards centre field, and the mark is taken by uh, Vanderhaar. Vanderhaar. High kick. It's the best way to defend yourself in a situation like that, thinks Glenn Hawker, but he doesn't come out with the ball. It's Roberts. Tries to find Neagle, but the kick dropping a little bit short for him, and the mark is picked up by Mitchell. And a 15-metre penalty. That was sudden death. Now the half forward for the Swans, and that's about as far as they usually get in, goes Duckworth. Evans. Finally, it's Duckworth again. He's shepherded and takes plenty of time with the kick. Back towards centre field. Knock on by Torbett, picked up by Cruz, looks for someone going past, there is no one. Chance for Wayne Carroll, well tackled by Clark. Out to Torbett, puts it high towards half forward, and the mark is taken by uh, Danaher. On to Duckworth. This is uh, pretty easy stuff for isn't it, at the moment. Hawk, no one to give it to. The Swans aren't running tonight. Holden, well pinned, he gets clear finally. Left foot kick up towards the half forward line again. Merritt goes the big punch, gets it down to Thompson. He's caught by Wright. Umpire says dropping the ball. Well, that was six or one and a half a dozen. The other only a push in the back. The young Thompson. I didn't think he had any chance whatsoever. <laughs> oh, beautiful spoil by Bradbury. Essendon defence is really working overtime tonight, and they've played it well. Carey's kick out towards the boundary line, trying to find Elshaw. The bounce and lose him. It's picked up by Hawke around one opponent, steadies and shoots it in towards the pocket, Danner is there, that might even be a score, oh. is it a goal? Yes it is! It just dribbled up! 
Eston back into attack, knocked on by Van Haver to Wizard, running to an open goal, a hand pass coming over to Big Matt, he's got to fall over to Miss Bet, and he's got it through for a goal. Well, that was a quick reply by the Bombers after the Swans got that lucky goal. If the Swans were to have a chance, that had to be the Swans that kicked it in that manner. That's and right. When you're down like they have been, you have to get two goals uh, straight away as we see Van der Haar tap it on, Ezard, and Ezard's been in danger to the Swans right through the night. Certainly played a great game, but they've had many good players. You could name Danaher, Van der Haar's done a great job. And Madden now finishing it off. So a great team goal by Essen. Just goes to show how the little men make it easy for the big ruckman. <laughs> Here we go again. Knocked out by Torbett. Wayne Carroll still battling very hard. He's tried his heart out. As the ball's driven up there by Elshaw, out towards Van der Haar. Right on his tail now is Cruz. Taps the ball on smartly to Neagle. He picks it up beautifully. A left foot kick. It's a wild one. It'll go out of bounds on the fall. And a penalty free kick at half back to the Sydney Swans. It'll be uh, the kick taken down there by either Foy or Dennis Carroll. 7-9-51 Essendon to the Sydney Swans, 2-6-18. Ball drops a bit short, the back merit goes to punts. Neagle again. He's had a million kicks too as the ball drops short. Punched away by the uh, Swans defence, which has been under tremendous pressure since quarter time. Back to Neagle again, there's the Sarah to win the third quarter. And at three-quarter time in the 1984 Sterling Cup Grand Final, we see Essendon 7-9-51 to the Sydney Swans, 2-6-18. difference at three-quarter time in favour of Essendon. They added 3-3 in that quarter to the Swans 1-1. Major goal kickers, well, in fact, only one player has two goals on the field, and that's Ezard, and he, Bob Skilton, has played a pretty good game for Essendon, hasn't he? Yes, Ezard has been a magnificent player. From the moment the, the game started, his pace around the packs, his sure ball handling, and he has uh, torn the Swans to pieces on many occasions, but he's had some good support. He's uh, moved Nagel, particularly from, uh, from quarter time, has controlled one wing, and uh, when you say one wing, he's gone from one end of the ground to the other, and as Peter said a couple of times, many times taking the ball out of defence. Uh, Duckworth and Thompson. Thompson's game in the back pocket has been superb. He has not put a foot wrong, and uh, anything that has come past uh, Van der Hoe or Danaher on across the half-back line, Thompson and Duckworth have continually sent it back again. But for the Swans, Wayne Carroll, Bernie Evans and Craig Holden and Mitchell have all tried hard, but they've been uh, outmanned and the Essendon side. Whenever there's a pack forms, you see three or four Essendon players and they handle the ball with uh, far more surety and their teamwork uh, leaves nothing to be desired. And Stephen Phillips has uh, further information for us downstairs, Steve. Thanks very much, Peter. Yes, uh, I listened into Bob Hammond's three-quarter time address. They certainly haven't given up. He says persistence and a little bit of memory of the semi-final when they got up in a quarter to beat Carlton. We'll be back with the final quarter. That's it for the final quarter now at BFL Park in the Sterling Cup Grand Final for 1984. And wherever you're watching throughout Australia, we hope you're enjoying the match. For the Swan supporters in Sydney, maybe this quarter will be the one. Final term. Essendon leading by 33 points, seemingly a match-winning lead. Can the Bombers go on with it? Knocked down by Madden, picked up by Timmy Watson at centre field. He's gone for a pass out toward Van der Haar at left half forward. Ezard doing the shepherding, but Roberts is in there. Could have almost been free kick, but the umpire says play on. Going through as Evans. The hand pass is a hurried one, intercepted by Van der Haar. He gets ridden into the ground, but the umpire still doesn't play a free kick. The mark taken by Smith onto Foy. Foy at right half-back flank. Long hand pass up towards Torbett. Back to Roberts. He's collared. Shrugs one tackle. Puts it back towards the centre circle. Knock on by Mitchell. Up to Danaher at uh, half-back. In fact, the two brothers are there. Bradbury. On to Elshaw. Eston still looking very much in command. Clark kick down towards half-forward. Torbett standing in the road, though and takes an uncontested mark. Over to Browning, kick, uh, well not kick number 12, went for the hand pass. At possession number 20, he's been their leading possession gatherer, Browning. Played a pretty solid game, but he always does. A free kick for a push out at centre field, will be going the Swans way, it will be taken by Danaher. Now towards half forward, plenty of Essendon players are there. And goes Holden. His hand pass wasn't a good one, put his teammates under plenty of pressure. Clark's in the bottom of that, Morewood fires out the hand pass. Good tackle by Bradbury on Holden, and the umpire has decided on a bounce. I wonder why they haven't brought Kappa back on the ground, Bob. It's, that surprised me, Lou. Uh, sure, he had trouble with Duckworth in that second quarter, but I thought he worried Duckworth in the first quarter. 
maybe he's injured. Thompson's kick, he's played a good game too, hasn't he? Out towards Ezard, in fact, uh, they're about the top two for the Bombers as I see it at the moment. Watson, did he have the ball? Because he seemed to be tackled, umpire Glenn James says play on. Holden does, do, not Holden, but Roberts. Roberts' kick is a long one up towards the centre-half forward position for the Swans, but the Essendon defence standing firm again. Elshaw does the shepherding, it's picked up by Donnell, he gets it to uh, Danaher, and the Bombers clear it out towards centre wing. And it'll be out of bounds on the centre wing position. Two minutes gone of the last quarter, 7-9-51 Essendon, the Sydney Swans 2-6-18. 33 points the difference. Kappa's not injured apparently from our man on the ground, Stephen Phillips. Ball punched on again, back there towards Timmy Watson, outmaneuvered that time by Brown. He went for the boundary line and it's out of bounds. So it's out of bounds, still on the centre wing position. And the difference, 33 points. I'll have to lift something out of the hat this time when this last quarter, uh, the Sydney Swans, if they want a chance, not playing well enough at this particular stage of the match. Tapped on by Wright. Neagle, been a star player. Hand pass, the ball finally driven up there by Vanderhaar. Oh, nice mark to Bernie Evans, a one hand. He's been one of the real goers for these ones tonight. 15 metre penalty to Evans, brings him right up to the half back line. As for short pass, it's dangerous, but Carroll takes that mark there a little short of the uh, wing position. The kick by Wayne Carroll, not a good one. Goes straight into the hands of Bradbury, a good mark. And that defence has been very strong for the Bombers as Danaher carts the ball down the centre half forward position to Mark drop that time by Smith that's little Thompson breaking clear played a great game in the back pocket that's a magnificent pass and has a chance now uh, for the uh, Bombers to get a goal through Baker he's only about uh, 20 metres out from goal probably 25 he's already kicked one and this is the one the Sydney Swans don't want if they ha want to have a chance in this game there's the kick on its way and there's no doubt about that one it's a goal Knocked down to Elshaw, he's fired out the long hand pass to Hawker at left half forward, he gets it back again, Elshaw, chips it in towards the pocket and Van der Haar takes a very, very good mark. He must pay that. Certainly must. Van der Haar had his doubts himself there, got up and asked the question of the umpire, but he had the ball before it was knocked out of his hands. I think it was nearly in the back to him too. Yep. So Paul Van der Haar, one of the longest kicks in the competition, only about uh, 30 metres out from goal, but on a fair angle. What's he done with that? I think he may have missed one behind, says the goal umpire. He won't be happy with that, but isn't it already have a pretty useful lead? 58 to 18, that's 40 points in favour of the Bombers. They'd have to do something miraculous here to win it, uh, Bob, or he'd have a chance, wouldn't they? It'd be the greatest comeback in history. <laughs> Since Lazarus. <laughs> Browning. Good kick, and again that's the rule with him. And a good safe mark brought in though by Timmy Watson. Watson at right half forward flank. Lead's been made by Merritt. He's gone for a short pass though to Harvey. Harvey not really much closer. Harvey about 45 metres from goal. Knocked it. In fact, nobody's having any luck at all trying to pick it up. The umpire, oh, somebody went down. That was Cruz. And I think uh, Merritt, was it Merritt that uh, was in there? Well, I reckon he might have had something to do with it because they all went after Merritt. Now poor old Hawk is coming, and I think he tried to separate them. And the runner speaking to Merritt anyway, and... Uh, <laughs> A staggered identity, yes, I reckon. I think it was. <laughs> anyway, let's... Uh, yes, uh... I think Merritt's going to get the kick. Well, you make up your own mind on that one. <laughs> <laughs> give it to us. Of course, the umpire doesn't have the benefit of a slow motion replay, and Merritt's got the kick. <laughs> Didn't retaliate. Yeah, that's the go. That's right. Now, Roger's laughing all the way to the bank. He's got the kick. He's missed a couple of easy ones tonight, but he'd have to fall over to miss this, surely only about 15 metres out, pretty well directly in front. In fact, he hasn't missed it. Two goals to Roger Merritt, and then it's about so up for his if it wasn't already. Just over seven and a half minutes gone of this last quarter, 64 plays, 18 in favour of the Bombers. Ball punched on down there towards Dano, who overruns the ball. There's the best player on the ground, just about young uh, Thompson. Cruz got up uh, very high that time into the back of Elshaw. 
but this gives Roberts a chance to pick it up at half back for the Sydney Swans he was grabbed but finally gets clear a hand pass coming out to Bernie Evans on the centre wing position goes for a long kick down towards that forward pocket position but too many defenders as Clark kicks the ball high back a chance now for Carroll to mark and that's Dennis Carroll taking the mark out there on the centre wing position for the Sydney Swans they're 18 points to the uh, Bombers 64 punched away by Duckworth a hand pass from Neagle coming out to Harvey. Back it goes again to Duckworth and he decides to go for a bit of a trot. Goes for a long kick. Up there to Timmy Watson and uh, Browning. Neither can take the mark. This allows Roberts to pick it up if he can. A little bit slow and getting rid of it. He's actually given a hand pass back there to Elshaw. Running to an open goal with a hand pass coming over to Hawker. Another long one to the big fella. Merritt will be another goal to win. Why did they do that easily? Just looking at what's sewn up before that, but that's completely sewn up now. Yes, yeah, a bad mistake by Ian Roberts, but uh, he has tried his uh, heart out. He's been uh, one of those uh, lion hearted tries, but unfortunately, you can't afford to make mistakes when you've got the class of uh, Essendon out there. And they uh, merit finish it off, but it was a great piece of uh, defensive work further upfield. And further upfield, Timmy Watson limping off the ground. I don't think too much to worry about. Played a pretty good game and receiving the warm round of applause. Just on the nine and a half minute mark, it's 10 10 70 to Eston, the Sydney Swans 2 6 18. And the Sydney Bulls are getting a nice old bath down here in Melbourne at BFL Park for the grand final of 1974 84, I should say. Knocked out something 10 years ago as the ball finally comes back to Danaher. He's grabbed but can't get clear. It's holding the ball against him, and the free kick will go to Hawk out there on the point of the square on their half forward line. But this can't score goals. Short pass. It'll be okay. And the mark taken here by Holden. About 50 metres out from goal. A little bit hesitant. Decides to go back for the long kick. There it is on its way. Right into the goal square. Oh, there's a great mark taken by uh, Simon Matt. Oh, down. Oh, no, Reese Jones got one then. Oh, they're still having a go. Even though it's uh, in the bag for the Bombers. Yes, it'd be a shame to get reported now. I reckon you'd be pretty stiff. You'd be a little bit foolish, I'd reckon. And uh, Simon Madden saying, look, I've got the ball. Let's take a look at it again. It's Madden doing the right thing there. Oh, yeah. He certainly <laughs> caught one, didn't he? Oh, did he what? I'd reckon could have been an accident. <laughs> Official attendance, 30,824 tonight. So not a bad crowd for uh, a chill evening in Melbourne. Danaher takes the market half back, gets it back to Harvey. Harvey a little bit slow, but it doesn't matter. On to Neagle, who's been one of Essendon's leading position gatherers right throughout the night. Knocked away by Foy. Back to Torbett at centre field. In the middle. Oh, there's a Donnybrook. On the middle, yes. Umpire Glenn James trying to sort a few things out out there. Play continues. It's an Essendon ball. No, it's not. It's a Swans free kick, it will be. Reese Jones, Pete. Pretty popular with the Essendon crowd, too, isn't it? <laughs> well, uh, I don't think that would worry him. Browning. Short pass, that's okay. <laughs> it could be uh, 15 metres, will it? Yes, it will. And by Glenn James was about two feet from that. This might be a chance for uh, a Swan to score at that end, and so far they've only kicked one point at that end of the ground. Hawk is uh, about 30 metres out. He's pretty well directly in front. They still haven't scored a goal down at that end, though. One point, so two points the Swans total at that end of the ground so far, 10-10 to 2-7. And that's a difference of 51 points. Ball comes back into play through Carey. No, it won't. He has to go back because the goal umpire hadn't finished waving the flag. It's going to be a free kick upfield to Duckworth. Uh, Wes Jones gave him one. <laughs> <laughs> so Duckworth takes the free kick at half back. And Duckworth, a long kick out towards centre wing. He's trying to find Madden, who marks in front of Smith. Simon chips it down further afield to Thompson. One of the best on the ground. Thompson from left half forward, a short pass, trying to find Vanderhaar or Merritt. Merritt couldn't take the mark. In goes uh, Evans, I think it is, on the bottom of that stack up. Holding the man, it'll be a free kick to Bernie Evans at right half back flank. 12 and a half minutes gone of the last quarter. 10 10 70 Essendon to the Sydney Swans 2 7 19. 51 points in favour of the Bombers. And you could say they've got this uh, championship sewn up. Kappa back on the ground. I'm surprised. 
Well, he's apparently he's coming back on the ground, and we'll see a free kick going there now. It'll go to uh, Bradbury around about the centre half forward position. Goes for the kick out wide. There's a chance now for the mark to be taken there by Thompson. He's played a great game, this fellow. Capper on the ground now. Thompson would be about uh, 35 metres out from goal on a bit of an angle. I reckon he deserves the goal here the way he's played. It's a left footer on its way. And I don't know whether he's kicked this. I think he has. What a great goal by the back pocket player. That's his first. And it's 11 goals, 10 76. Eston to the Sydney Swans, 2 7 9. And when the back pocket players kick goals like that, Bob, it's time to turn it up, I reckon. Now, we must admit, though, he's on the forward line now, though, Louis. <laughs> well, I've got to give him a wrap for that. <laughs> They've well, made a few changes, but uh, Thompson has played a wonderful game. But, uh, he put did not put one foot wrong while he was in the back pocket and now he's on the forward line he's still getting kicks well the most famous back pocket player to kick a goal in a grand final if my memory serves me correctly was neil crompton to collingwood's regret uh pete yeah i just thought i'd mention that lou well that's upset me for the night now <laughs> <laughs> bounced out at center field listen a very polished display tonight and will be worthy winners of the sterling cup for 1984 knocked away by roger merritt fisted back by torbett it goes to Bradbury, couldn't get a kick at it. Mitchell does, down towards the half-forward position. There's Kappa, comes out with the ball too. Hooks it high towards the pocket. Duckworth and Reese jones no love lost between that pair, and the ball was hustled through by Clark for one behind. Well, let's say uh, neither of Frighten have a go either, Pete, are they? <laughs> no. I wouldn't want to pinch the wallet of either of those guys in a, in a lane at uh, night. Duckworth, a oh, beautiful kick. Now towards Carroll, in turn on to Browning, who got into the back of his opponent, but umpire Glenn James says no free kick. Nagel goes the knock on to Harvey, that was well played. Harvey's kick is a high one, in towards centre field. Roberts at the back, got one hand to it, couldn't mark it. Williams attempted knock on, not successful. Foy, tackle on Williams, Williams breaks out of it though, gets it on to Baker. Baker's kick is short up towards half forward. Ezard, well spoken though, he uh, obviously said uh, Van der Haar at yours. Vanders takes the mark, chips it in short, back to Ezard, covering plenty of territory. A great attempt to mark, Merritt steps it over the shoulder. Close, but not close enough. One behind the end result. Well, Essendon really teaming well, Bob, aren't they? Oh, it's all over the ground. Uh, their teamwork has been great. There's, you can hardly find a weakness in the Essendon side. Whether they've, put, uh, they've swapped players around, Donnell started up uh, on the forward line, now he's on the back line. Uh, likewise, uh, Van der Haar and uh, Danaher have swapped. No matter what they've done, it's come off. Harvey couldn't quite take the mark. It rebounds to Roberts. Roberts onto Browning. Well, Browning's kick is a shocker, but in the end result is OK. It's marked by Smith. Oh, ho, ho. Spoons it out to Browning. Beautiful smother. And again, most things that Essendon attempt tonight are coming off. Picked up by Hawker. Hawker from half forward. He's gone for a pass. That's OK. On to Welshaw. A chance for an eagle goal. A good turn of speed by the Essendon centre man. A long shot. He's going through for four points. It's the Bombers back into attack again. Pass over there to Thompson. He's grabbed it from Elshaw. Will he played on? Well covered by Hawke. Be about 45 metres out from goal. Boots the ball across towards the centre forward position. Ball punched out. Violet hits the deck. Grabbed by Braddy. A hand pass to Morwood over to Browning. Back to right. But they've got no one up at forward as the ball goes back there. Danaher taps on a chance now for Siddons to pick it up. But he's upended by, just about upended by Neagle. And there'll nearly be a free kick here. You know, the umpire said it'll be a push in the back. I thought so. It'll go to Bradbury out there on the centre wing position. Short pass. The bomber defence has been really strong today. Umpire's paying that mark to uh, Thompson. A hand pass coming over to Williams. Drives the ball long up towards the full forward position. Ball punched out again by Braddy. Cruz gets a hurried knock on. And there we see Elshaw grab. Didn't have the ball. The umpire call playing. Down goes right. They pile on top of him. And the umpire's found a free kick. It'll go to right. I think he wanted to clean things up a bit. Oh, to be put Cruz under pressure that time but Cruz's strength got him out of that one out to Siddons again punched away by Carey a chance now for Danaher that's if he ever picks it up Carey goes after him he turns gets it back to Holden out there on the centre wing position a kick over the centre half forward position punched away by Duckworth 
And there's a go now for uh, Williams to pick it up. And the ball finally driven up there uh, by uh, Eustace. Out towards the centre wing position. And the umpires found a free kick. It'll go to Harvey for Essendon out there on the centre wing position. 12 goals, 11.83 Essendon to the Sydney Swans. Two goals, 8.20 just on the 19-minute mark of this last quarter. And it will be a free kick for in the back against Simon Madden and the free kick to be taken by Smith at the left half-back flank. And time has certainly run out for the Swans. Nesson far too good on the night. Torbett. Braddy. Then again a smother by Baker is successful. Picked up by Roberts. Oh, throw it out to Smith. Oh, goodness me. Beautiful throw. Picked up by Evans, back and turned to right. Right, it goes to Hawke. Hawke to Holden. On to Mitchell. Mitchell steady, shoots it. Go was at their first at that end of the ground. I think he's put it through. Yes, all clear. Things very quiet because uh, all that goal does is add a little bit of respectability because uh, Essendon absolutely dominant. Young Mitchell. Still a prospect of the future, I feel, Lou, as we no watch doubt, the replayers Holden getting it out to Mitchell. And I think we're going to hear a lot more of young Barry Mitchell, who was probably able to walk here tonight. He comes from Mulgrave. So, uh, could be around for a while, but uh, Essendon doing everything right so far. Swan's third goal, coming up midway through the final quarter, but it's 12-11-3-8 in favour of Essendon. They won the title in 1981 and they'll be premiers in 84 as well. Stevie Wright, tackled by Neagle, but he didn't have the ball. And the free kick will be going to the Swans Ruck Rover at centre field. He decides to dish one out just for his trouble. And has got a 15 metre penalty to boot. Stevie Wright goes for the short pass, looking for Reese Jones. And he's just about grabbed the mark <laughs> and runs into a little bit of trouble. <laughs> Carey. <laughs> There's a couple of them down there, pretty tough. Carey and Duckworth, how would you like to run them in the back alley about uh, quarter past three in the morning? We'll watch uh, again on replay. <laughs> Cop that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, so mean he still flies from a blind spider. Mm. David Rhys-Jones is 30 metres out from goal on a slight angle. And it looks OK. It's a goal. So, Rhys-Jones putting through... A badly needed goal for the Swans, but it will add some respectability to their total, therefore. Bob, he gets a lot of abuse, Reese Jones, but by golly, he cops a lot too, doesn't he? Yes, but as I said earlier, Lee, <laughs> if you give it, you've got to cop it. Well, I know, but just the same. I don't know if he's in front or not. When you look uh, over the... Uh, uh, he's a great player and a great personality. I'd reckon. I like him. Here we go back to the centre now. It'll be Torbett, still as keen as ever, against Madden but they're well down the drain. 51 points, as a matter of fact. We see uh, Williams thread his way through the pack to kick it over the centre-half forward position, and there's a good mark in defence at centre-half back by Foy. To their credit, Lou, they have not stopped trying. They just haven't had anything up forward. That's right. They've tried hard, but they haven't been good enough. A long hand pass coming over to Hawke. Under pressure, gets one back again. Another one from uh, Dennis Carroll over to Cruz. A long kick up towards uh, Reese Jones again, but he smothered the ball. Hits the deck as Danaher. A hand pass out to Evans. A long one coming over to Kappa. He snaps at goals, and what has he done? Let's see. A goal. Well, they're coming back, but not good enough. It's too late for them. 12 11 83 to the Sydney Swans. 5 8 38. It's a pity they didn't play like that in the early part of the game. Yes, well, maybe Essendon have uh, steadied down a little bit, but as I just said previously, they have not stopped trying, and that uh, is, you know, great credit to them. And if you keep at it, then uh, something surely must come your way. But uh, I think Essendon may have relaxed just a little. Just on the 23-minute uh, mark of this last quarter, 83 plays 38. Torbett again against Simon Madden at the centre bounce. Knocked out by Torbett, as a go for Hawke, but he missed a hand pass. That one kicked off the ground by Alshaw. Out again by Thompson, out wide looking for Neagle. He's got the run here. Picks it up, balked beautifully away from Dennis Carroll. Goes for the long kick. Looking for Van der Haar, but he's swamped there. The ball hits the deck. Oh, they throw him down. That's Hazard going down like a bag of spuds that time. Finally, they get the ball clear. The Swans out wide that time by... Uh, 
uh, Mitchell it was and there we see a chance there for the ball to be driven up there by Eustace across the centre half four and a good mark Kip out. it'll be a free kick against Thompson well I don't know about that one he's played a great game just the same a free kick to Roberts he's really tried he looks as though he might be hurt a bit but he's going to take the kick now a hand pass to Brad it's a shocker he loses it Going in that time was Ezzard, he got the ball back, but it's grabbed by uh, Brad, he can't get clear, they're falling over like nobody's business there, and the umpire will ball it up about 50 metres out uh, from the uh, bomber goal. Ball up, directly in front of Eston goal, knocked down by Roger Merritt, tries to get it to Thompson, he got caught pretty quickly, umpire Rowan Soares will bounce it again. Torbett and Merritt free kick against Roger Merritt for shepherding in the ruck the free kick will be taken by Torbett Torbett from centre half back looks for Tony Morwood or Danaher, neither can take the mark the two brothers tangle Clark trying to pick it up, it's very slippery, tries to get it out to his skipper, not successful no one making any headway wild hand pass, knocked back by Clark, in goes Hawke Carey's right behind him, in goes Kappa, socket off the ground, out towards Neagle, Dennis Carroll right after him, Neagle turns out of trouble beautifully, fires it on towards Bradbury at left centre wing, and a chance for the Bombers to go into attack again, they've really opened it up now, Baker, down to Ezard, Ezard at left half forward, gets around Browning, the kick is high, he's trying to find the uh, back pocket player Thompson down there, Hawker to Eustace, not a good hand pass, Tony Morwood, Thompson again, Eustace, kick is high, in towards the forward pocket, Baker could have got a free kick there, Eston fan certainly thought so, Merrick tries the tap on, not successful, down it comes to Smith, Smith a pass, a short one, is that out of bounds on the floor or a mark? Mark, please. he's played it to Witzel, Witzel just up from the back pocket. And we're just over the 25 and a half minute mark of this last quarter, so... You can put down your glass as far as the uh, champs are concerned. Essendon, Danaher got a touch of the fumbles but tapped it on all right. And that's Elshaw getting a nice hand pass over to Madden. Back it goes to Eustace. A high kick back towards that centre-half forward position. The ball hits the deck. Torbett's in the thick of things. Taps the ball out. Hawk snaps it up. A hand pass to Browning at centre-half back. Boots the ball towards the centre-half forward position. Oh, Danaher dropped that. was a difficult mark. Reese Jones is clear. He's looking for someone to give it to. He decides to have a shot at goal. But there's no one up there at all for the Sydney Swans. And Duckworth picks it up very easily without any worry at all. Out wide to Neagle. He's got about a mile and a half to run. to do something with it. Short pass. It'll be OK. And the mark taken there by Williams. As we said before many times tonight that their forward line has been non-existent, the Sydney Swans. Over the top of Carroll. Picked up now by Ezard. He's played a pretty good game. He's had plenty of mates too. Runs to half, Ford goes for a pass, there's a chance for Baker, he's got it. And he'll only be about uh, 30 metres out from goal directly in front and going for goal number th two, three. Well, now this will be the Bombers 13th, they're 83 to the Sydney Swans 38, just on the 27 minute mark of this last quarter. And Eston have the uh, grand final in the bag as he fires at the goals. And it's a goal. So their score now, 13-11-89 to the Sydney Swans. Five goals, 8-38. There's a big difference as every time that Essendon come down the ground, they'd have somebody to kick to. Uh, and this does come when you're having a, a, a good win. You've got players, Ezard now, having all the time in the world to steady and place the ball across the ground. And there were loose men. He could have kicked it to Thompson. He could have kicked it to Baker. Chose Baker and Baker a beautiful kick. Three goals to Baker. 89 plays 38 on the Sterling Cup scoreboard. We're into the time on period by nearly three minutes in the final term. Evans from centre field out to right half forward. Kappa gets there first for the Swans. Kicks the ball high towards the 10 metre square. Clark, though, leading in the race for the ball, takes the easiest of marks from Mitchell. Clark at left back pocket for Isn't it? Donnell. Very polished display by the Bombers tonight. Donnell's kick is a long one up towards the halfback flank. Evans. In front is Eustace. At the back, Morwood just about grabs the mark. The umpire doesn't play it to either player. Browning went for a wild hand pass. Here's Neagle again. 
The Bombers running down the ground in twos and threes as they have most of the night. They've outran the Swans. Hawker's hand pass, a long one. Intercepted there by Smith, who kicks it off the ground. He went straight forward. Well, he couldn't do much else no. that time, Pete. 13-11 to 5-8. It would have been murdered and they'd have penalised him for that. Knocked back by Morwood. Oop. Stevie Wright got one too high. Fired out the hand pass in the meantime. Eustace. A short pass up towards full forward. Braddy missed it. Baker is caught. Or not Baker, I think it might be Clark. No, it is Baker. Right the first time. And Baker played a very good game for Essendon tonight. He's kept it off with three good goals. As has Roger Merritt. Torbett and Merritt will contest the bounce. It's won by Torbett. And he finds Browning. Browning goes out towards the boundary line. You think the Swans had a 10-goal lead and not Essendon. 13-11 to 5-8. Well, not quite 10 goals, but it was at one stage. 89 plays 38. So Essendon well and truly in command of this match, as they have been pretty well since quarter time. Merritt and Torbett. Oh, it's a wrestle. It's like uh, Gary Dempsey and Peter Moore. Wanted the line across the circle. And Steve Torbett comes out with this free kick. Torbett at left half back flat. Just on the 30 minute mark of this last uh, quarter, the siren due to go any tick of the clock. And the S will be uh, the grand final champions of uh, the Sterling Cup for 1984 for sure. The kick by Danaher's is Jocker going for the boundary line and it's out of bounds. Well, so I think they're going to bring it back for a 15 metre penalty. So this brings uh, the ball, the crowd coming the, the ground, the ground. So it hasn't sounded yet, has it? No. Nope. No, no, so on the crowd running onto the ground. I don't think they're going to get them back. There's thousands pouring on here. Yeah. How will they ever get them back? Great yeah, all the spectators need to ground, please. You're not allowed the the uh, amplifier, well, the is not speaker over the amplifier is telling the people to get back. Tell you what, that'll be just about an impossible job. There's thousands on the ground, and the game is not over yet. Golly, be, no. They've got no hope of getting him off. They, well, the police are trying to do it now. Well, at least there's been another sensation for this grand final. Still, the Sterling Cup grand final. Well, they're trying to get him up. Still thousands of people. Some are still jumping over the fence. And the siren certainly hasn't uh, gone up. Come on, back over the fence, please. Would you please leave the ground? Well, up the, the amazing part is that there are others still coming over the fence. <laughs> That's right, they're still pouring over there. They're all going back. Look at them all. Oh, well, they've had a good trot. Pretty cold out there tonight. I suppose they've got themselves <laughs> warmed up now. We were practice, wouldn't it? Probably only about five seconds play left yeah, anyway. That's right. Well, we're at the 31 and a half minute mark just about. It's 89 points Essendon to the Sydney Swans, 38. And there's no doubt, Essendon for the flag, or the night football flag by the Sterling Cup. Well, this might put down a... There's a shot from the uh, light tower, Lou. That's right. Well, Danaher with I'm the ball. It's, I'm glad it's a cameraman up there, not <laughs> me. At any rate, Danaher, the crowd uh, gradually getting off the ground. I reckon there must have been 5,000. Could have been more than rushed on the ground. What did you do? You count the legs and divide by well, two, did that's you? That's right. Well, yeah. there's been a very good crowd in tonight, Pete. Just the same 30,000 people. Yeah. Waiting now for Danaher. And about uh, a couple well, of hundred still to get off. Well, I think if the timekeeper was wide, as soon as he has his kick, he'd sound the siren. It can't be too <laughs> far away. <laughs> Certainly can't. We're at the uh, 32, th just on the 32 and a half minute mark. Well, that cost us about a minute and a half at least, possibly two minutes. That's right. Oh, come on, Glenn, let them go now. They're all back in position. Glenn's making sure everybody gets up. He might be looking for overtime. Well, they're still up to the, just on the, over the fence near the boundary line. And I'll let it go now. Danaher from about... Uh, 50 metres out, boots the ball across towards centre half four. The siren due to go and a tick of the clock. Knocked out by Reese Jones. Neagle gets a hand pass out to Harvey. Now the Bombers get the ball up to their half four line. And that'll be a mark to Braddy. Over the top of Vanderhaar that time. Short pass, not a good one, but it might be all right. Wright goes after, couldn't pick it up on the first top. Has an over the go, down he goes. But there's plenty of Bombers there to take the ball away as it finally comes out to merit from uh, Elshaw. Over it goes. And I was going to say, that's the side. I don't want to say they'll have more running on the ground again. 
as we see Witzel drive the ball back to centre field. Oof. And uh, that'll be a mark out there to Dennis Carroll. He paid the free kick, didn't he? Well, he could have paid the free kick. It would have been a mark also with uh, Carroll getting a long kick up to centre half forward. Carey couldn't hold that, but he's well backed up that time by Danner. A long hand pass out there going after it as Williams picks it up on the first bounce. Gets away from Danner. There's the siren. And the Bubbers have won the 1984 Sterling Cup. They're the champs. 13 11, 89 to the Sydney Swans. 5 8, 38. And a great win to Essendon, Bob. Yes, there's not a doubt about that, Lou. Uh, by far, the best side on the night. They had good players all over the field. Uh, in defence, Thompson, Duckworth, Vanderhaar, and then Danaher when he went down there. Across the, the centre, he couldn't fault uh, Nagel's going from quarter time onwards. Up forward, Danaher early, and then Vanderhaar, and they both swapped. Ezard was a great player right through the night, not to mention Merritt, full forward in the ruck. Uh, Madden did his job. Watson came in and out of the game, and Williams, a busy player as well. The Swans tried hard, but they were out, out man. They had to uh, hold him doing well in the centre early, but he faded. Bernie Evans tried his heart out right throughout the night, uh, as did Wayne Carroll. Hawk never, never gave up trying, but uh, they were just out man. No matter what happened, uh, nothing they could do uh, was constructive enough. Whereas Essendon always had a forward moving into a space, the Swans had nothing to kick to coming down the ground. And uh, by far the best side uh, won. You can't uh, you don't have to look at the scoreboard to see that. 13 11 to 5 8. But uh, Essendon really looked good. Full marks to uh, the Swans. They were badly outnumbered uh, all over the ground, particularly their, well, down there in defence. But you've got to say this about it. Even though they were, were really uh, thrashed in tonight, they st tried really hard. And uh, it's bad luck, but just the same, they did very well to get into the grand final of the Sterling Cup. Final scores were 13 11 89, Essendon defeating the Swans 5 8 38. Final scores Essendon winning by 51 points. They came right away from the Swans in the final term, but of course the damage was done in that second quarter. At half time, they had a break of 19 points and they capitalised from there on in. The major goal kickers for Essendon, three goals to Baker, three to Merritt and two to Ezard. And for the Swans, their five goals were scored by Wright, Rhys Jones, Hawke, Kappa and Mitchell. Shortly the presentations, gentlemen, but how did you see the best players? Well, uh, there's no doubt the Bombers had the majority of better players. Bob, I think, mentioned during the commentary that Neagle was a great player after quarter time. Danaher was sensational the first half. And, of course, you couldn't go past little Ezard. He got plenty of help from the rest of the back line. Irrespective of whether you like Duckworth or Carey, they do a <laughs> tremendous job. And if I was playing for any football team, you'd love to have Duckworth, uh, uh, what's his name, Carey, and Merritt in your side. Yeah. It'd make you run ten foot tall. But Good I thought... Matthews and Rhys James. Well, that's right. I feel a bit sorry for uh, uh, Rhys James. He cops a lot, he gives a lot, but also he's on the wrong end sometimes. But I gave my best player to Thompson. I thought he played a tremendous game, particularly in that first part of the game when the Bombers had to get going. And then he continued on with that, Bob. Yes, I thought Nagel was uh, great on the wing. I thought uh, Merritt uh, did his job, whether on the ball or at full forward. Uh, Baker kicked a couple of goals. Terry Danaher was superb in the first half. Alan Ezard played four great quarters of football. I thought the best player for the Swans was easily Bernie Evans. He continued yeah. to try right throughout. But Thompson did not make a mistake for three quarters in the back pocket. Went to the forward line in the last quarter, kicked a magnificent goal. And I agree with Lou. I think that uh, Mark Thompson uh, was a magnificent player and easily my best. Bob, uh, it does happen too. You know, I know he was on the forward line, but when back pocket players start kicking goals, it's time to turn <laughs> football up. You've got no hope. So winning. you guys are going to go out at a good night. You both agree for once, do you? Yes, yeah, we and do. we're going for a little man too. Well, that's the figures. top of the evening up. All right, so uh, Mark Thompson looks as though he's the winner of our final national award for 1984. We'll take a break and we'll be back with the presentations in a few moments. Welcome back to BFL Park and now for the presentation of the 1984 Sterling Cup. We go downstairs to the VIP function room here at VFL Park and here's Stephen Phillips. Thank you Peter. The $525,000 Sterling Cup for 1984 has been won, won quite convincingly by Essendon and with us in this function room are the Essendon players and officials and the players from the Sydney Swans. Also the chairman of Australian Football Championships, it's my pleasure to introduce him, Dr Alan Arlott. Thank you, thank you. 
Well, it does give me a great deal of pleasure in these uh, unusual circumstances below the grandstand to uh, certainly congratulate both teams on their magnificent performance, not only on tonight, but reaching the grand final of the Stirling Cup. I think we should also extend a very, very uh, warm thank you to uh, the WD and HO Wills Company, uh, the people who are responsible for the Stirling production, and also to the Channel 7 Network for what they've done for the propagation of Australian football over the last three years, and particularly in the year of 1984. I must say that in the time that we've been running this night series, that there have been uh, six individual winners, and the Swans and the Essendon Club have each won one of those championships. But this year, for the first time, there has been one club that has won it twice, and it is the Essendon Football Club. A great performance tonight, and I, I, I believe that, it's, uh, that it stands without any more saying that they are the indisputable champions of the night series for 1984. The Essendon Football Club Australian football champions for 1984, and I would like to make the presentation of the Sterling Cup and all of the checks that go with that particular winning exercise to the captain of the club, Terry Danaher. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Graham Thompson from WD and HO Wills. I'm, I, I suppose I get, I'm speaking on behalf of the Essendon Football Club, uh, the staff, and to all the players, the players that played tonight, and players were, which probably were a bit unfortunate to, you know, a few were out injured. So I'd, I'd just like to uh, firstly thank WD and HA Wills for sponsor, sponsoring the championships. I'd like to also uh, pass on my congratulations to the Swans, you know, on making the grand final. It was a terrific effort, and. Uh, and to, to the players, you know, it was a terrific effort. We've worked hard, you know, all through the season. This is one, we've won. Hopefully we can re repeat the same again in September. We've got a lot of work in front of us. Thanks very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Sheedy. Good boy from Hungary, eh? Hey? <laughs> Come a long way in a big time. Um, first of all, to, to my players, uh, congratulations on your fine effort tonight. A good win, you know, we needed a win after the grand final that we played in last year and the way we were very disappointing and uh, so congratulations, uh, you deserve that because you've trained hard, you've come through your four matches and we've won them pretty well and tonight we found a good hard side, the Swans. Um, I believe the Sydney Swans, it's going to be great experience for you. I've got no doubt about that, fellas, because until you learn to get up in final sort of football and really keep chipping away at it like we were about a year or two ago, just ourselves, it's a sort of, it's a sort of step that you want to keep working towards that ambition. I know that we have had to do that ourselves, and I'd like to wish you all the best for the rest of the season, and we meet you in the finals. To, uh, to our supporters, uh, I'm glad that we've won it for you. I mean, I know that uh, we're a better side now than what we used to be. Uh, to our supporters that have membership tickets that help me recruit players, it's uh, all the more thank you from our, our, our whole club because uh, the supporters that get your membership tickets help us really keep our club happy, get the finances in to make the club run. So from that point of view, it's tremendously pleasing for yourself. 
um, to a young boy out in Fairfield uh, Hospital, Chris Haggerty, a, a young bomber who's in a bit of ill health at the uh, present time. We'd like to send a cheerio from uh, everybody here at Essendon to wish you all the best. Good luck and thanks very much. We've got one more presentation to make. It's a national award for the best player on the ground. We just might go up to Lou Richards and Peter Landy and uh, we'll be back with that award in just a moment. Right, thank you, Stephen. And just repeating that the award has been won by uh, number 26, Mark Thompson, who played a great game tonight. We'll be back with that presentation after this break. Well, the Swans are uh, being defeated by 51 points in the grand final. The final scores 13-11 to 5-8. Uh, and of course the player that plays the most outstanding game of the series will be presented on World of Sports in a few weeks time with the tremendous prize just before we make our presentation downstairs let's check on that right now player of the match tonight is Mark Thompson of Essendon let's go down to Stephen Phillips once more thanks Peter well Mark it's uh, really something to play in a winning team in a grand final but it's something extra to be voted best on the ground <laughs> I like the way that uh, Terry Danaher kept prompting you beforehand. Yeah, um... <laughs> All I'd like to say is, uh... <laughs> Shut up, Wiz. <laughs> I was rap playing in the Premiership side and also playing well, and uh, I'd just like to thank National for donating the stereo and uh, Channel 7 judges for voting for me. And, uh... <laughs> Mark, just tell us about that goal. Just all my teammates. What about that goal? What's wrong with it, mate? <laughs> <laughs> that was Mark, good. a man of few words. You've uh, performed magnificently out there tonight. <laughs> and uh, we congratulate you again on behalf of National. At this stage, uh, we might say goodnight from down here and go back to your hang upstairs, on, Peter. Hang on, hang on. Oh, well, hold on. <laughs> you know Second wind. I'd just like to welcome all the Essendon supporters back to the Essendon Football Club to celebrate our victory tonight. Back to you, Peter. I think he took over from Stephen a bit later, didn't he? Yeah, I reckon he, he stumped him completely. <laughs> Stephen said, uh, what about that goal? He said, what about it? Well, what was wrong with it? <laughs> it wasn't a bad goal. Uh, the... the Sterling Cup. After an even first quarter, the Bombers took control and at three-quarter time they had an unbeatable 33-point lead. Although the Swans more than doubled their own score in the final term, Essendon increased their margin to run out winners by 51 points. The final scores, Essendon 13-11-89 to the Sydney Swans 5-8-38. We'll go to the highlights from the match now and first of all, Paul Hawk for the Swans. A long shot goes through the pack and it bounces through. That might even be a score. Is it a goal? Yes it is. It just dribbled over. Unbelievable. Now the Bombers into attack. Ezard over to Simon Madden. Coming over to Big Madden. He's going to fall over to Miss Bitt. And he's got a three for a goal. Again for the Bombers, Al Shaw onto Hawker. Then to Roger Merritt in the goal square. Al Shaw again in the play, this time to Merv Neagle. A chance for a Neagle goal. A good turn of speed by the Essendon centre man. A long shot. He's going through for four points. The Swans tried hard to fight back, Hawk, Hawk, onto Holden, Hawk to Holden, onto Mitchell. Onto Mitchell, Mitchell steady, shoots it, go, is it there first at that end of the ground? I think he's put it through. Smothered the ball, it's the now Danaher, Danaher, onto Evans, pass out to Evans and the ball ends up with Warwick Kappa. Kappa. He snaps at goals, and what has he done? Let's see. A goal! But the Bombers were much too good, even though there was an anti-climax to the match when thousands of the 30,000-strong crowd ran onto the ground before the final siren had sounded. And police and umpires took some time to clear the crowd off the ground so the match could get underway, although it only lasted for another minute or so. And, of course, the successful captain, Terry Danaher, and giving the Bombers their second night grand final in just four. From the Seven Sports Desk, as the rumblings of the National Football League make their presence felt, it seems an ideal time.